And it is always a tradition here on the National Football Show. And also because my friend Bill Calirillo is a big fan of it. Big Sills! <laughs> How you doing? All good, man. Thank you guys so much for coming aboard. You guys can go anywhere, and you have so many options. We so appreciate you picking us each and every single day to come here. Absolutely awesome. By the way, right out of the gate, your favorite, backed by popular demand, no matter what I do, Philly 500 will be with us at 3.30. And then we will get the legend. The man who has passed the torch in Philadelphia sports talk to Big Sills. The man who moved the needle. The man who is the godfather of Philly sports. Angelo Cataldi will join us at 4.30. How you doing? Huh. I'm hoping he likes Jason Kelsey. <laughs> I found out the hard way he did not like Andy Reid, okay? He's not giving Big Red any kind of love anytime soon. So I learned that baby the hard way. How you doing? All right. All good. Sills, you got him in there saying trade AJ? Trade AJ? What are you talking about? Trade AJ? I don't give a shit who is on the trading block. If it makes my team better, you're all expendable. I don't want anybody in that Philadelphia Eagle locker room to ever think their job is safe. I want them to be on pins and needles. Nobody should feel when you're at a high profile. Hey, you want to hear something here? Xander tries to keep me calm. Hey, Sills, you're good, dude. We're good. I don't believe him. You know why? It's the industry I work in. This guy can love me and love the show. Things in business. Sometimes go for the better or go for the worse. That's the business we choose. Like Hyman Roth. It's the business we choose. When you're in professional sports and you got high profile jobs like that, your job's not safe, nor should you feel safe. You're only as good as the last day you perform. I don't ever want anybody. Do you, do you know who feels safe? A waiter. A waiter. Not a guy who does something like I've been doing for over 30 years. I've never felt safe. I wake up every day expecting someone to go, hey, guess what happened? This advertiser caused this, uh, the industry chain. I know. That's why it's funny when I see some of you guys talking about former employees that we've had or WIP has had. Are you not under the impression here that this industry changes on a daily basis and more people are being turned away from radio and to streaming and to what we're doing because that's just the landscape that's going through a transition? This business changes every day. It's not personal. Okay. <laughs> look at look at LJ. It's still cranky because Maddox is gone. I could give a shit if Maddox is gone. I could care less. Whatever makes your team better, whatever gives you a chance at having fifty million dollars in cap space, more power to you. We're gonna have some fun here too, man. By the way, it's true. The Eagles, by the end of this whole thing and by the start of free agency, you may have fifty million dollars to play with. My question will be. What will the Eagles do with that? Okay. What will the Eagles do with it? Will they do anything with it? Will they spend? 
I don't know. By the way, I have one question before we start. We got a ton of stuff to hit on. Just a ton of stuff. So the Eagles spend the most money in their old line. And they're getting away from running the ball. Why? Don't you think you should go back to what you did great and what you paid for? Not only in your quarterback, but in your old line. You spend all your money for a left tackle, a right tackle. You're going to spend $20 million on a left guard. You drafted a second-round center guard in Jurgens, and you're probably going to draft another first-round guy. Oh, by the way, Big Seals mock draft one. And all of you hated McDuffie when I chose him a couple of years ago. Even Xander hated him. I have my guy that I think, and I watched a bunch of film on him, and I talked to Carl Dunbar, and I talked to Alonzo Highsmith and Dan Morgan on this respected player. We will do that. And also... One of you guys came up with a great topic. 13 Eagle predictions by Big Sills and 13 NFL predictions I have for the 2024 season. So we'll get into that here in a second. I'm just curious. I mean, you would think that the Philadelphia Eagles would want to be a running team. But that's not what your movie director and your – Movie star owner Jeffrey Lurie wants. He wants big play offense. It costs you 18 turnovers doing that shit. Okay? And, and, and by the way, I, I saw that with Barkley, potentially to the Eagles. How much? I'm not paying a lot of money for him. He's not as good as you think. He's overhyped. He's overhyped, Barkley. He's always hurt. And he underperforms. What are you talking about? Why, why is Barkley's name? Why? Because he went to Penn State and he was a number two pick. He never lived up to any of that. You're making Saquon Barkley sound like a superstar. He's not. Saquon Barkley's not a superstar running back. The kid in Las Vegas is better. Jacobs is better. Jacobs is better. Barkley's not as good as you think. He he never stays healthy. Are you really going to throw seven? You're not throwing $7 million after Saquon Barkley. Come on, man. You could do better than that. You could get a better back that's more reliable and can pass protect better at a cheaper price than Saquon Barkley. You're going to overpay for that dude because he's the number two pick. Don't be blinded by that. We can legitimately Super Bowls if we ran the ball. Absolutely, Khalid. Here, here's the one thing about here's the one thing about Barkley. If you sign Barkley, you're going to overpay for him. It's not worth it. You're paying for a name, and because he played in New York, he's not that good. He's he I'd I'd rather keep DeAndre Swift. He played 17 ball games. Swift is a good back. I'd rather stay with him, pay less, than overpay for a guy who's always hurt. Or like Flexen, draft the running back. Dude, seriously. I I, I saw this. Oh, oh, the and of course it's the mouthpiece of the Eagles. Howard Eskin saying that the uh, because someone whispered in his ear, yeah, don't believe that shit. So the Eagles would be in the market for an often injured, high priced, overpaid running back. Come on, man. That means that the Eagles are looking at something different in the open market. Nobody's going to pay for an overhyped, often injured, overpriced running back who does not. Live up to his reputation. Come on. Joe Mixon makes more sense. Absolutely. 
Okay. What stands out from Barkley against your birds? Nothing. Hey, I I mean, hey, you know what? And LJ's right. Howie looks at everyone. That's what really a general manager general manager should do. It, it, is look at everyone. Okay? Sills's hate for Penn State is no joke. I'm I'm you know what? I'm getting better on that. Matt, I'm getting better on it, but I'm going to show you something here in a little bit that's going to change your opinion. I'd rather have Derrick Henry. Of course I'd rather have Derrick Henry, but I'm not paying 8 million bucks for that. Okay? Joseph said, Mike Florio said that GMs and agents are lying like crazy right now. Absolutely. They're trying to elevate their player, lower another, you know, you know what, you know what they'll do? They will throw a name of a guy out, an agent, and go like this. Hey, I heard that three teams did not like him. So that it elevates their guy. Absolutely. Oh, my God. You're in the land of misinformation right now. You would think that you're following the Biden-Trump presidential campaigns. Okay? I mean, this is the land of lies now. We're officially in the land of lies. Okay? Okay? I think I'm going to do my mock draft first. Would you guys like to all 32 first round picks? You guys think you want to do that? My predictions for the Eagles, 13 predictions for 2024 and NFL predictions. What would you guys like to start the show with? I'm going to leave this up to you and let you program this first segment. Since you guys like programming the network, right, Xander? I'll leave this up to you. What would you like to hear? I do three. Mock drafts every year. I do one right before free agency. I do one right after the third week of free agency and then one right before the NFL draft. And I have your Eagle player. That's the first guy up at number 22. I left him there at number 22. Since you guys seems to be the mock draft, here we go. Big Sills, mock draft number one. I think you're going to be surprised when I get down to the Eagles at 22. Chicago, they move on from Justin Fields and they do draft Caleb Williams, quarterback USC. Um, I don't really see it. I think him and Jaden Daniels, are right there. But Caleb looks like he has more skill set. Number two, the Washington Commanders, Jaden Daniels, quarterback, LSU, played against some of the best competition in the country. He was a star at LSU, had two great wide receivers. I really liked his player. And personally, I think Jaden Daniels has a better career than Caleb Williams. But Caleb Williams, in my opinion, again, this is not who I want Chicago to take. This is who I believe Chicago is going to take. And this is who I think Washington's going to take. Number three, the New England Patriots. New head coach, new quarterback. Drake May, quarterback. UNC, University of North Carolina. Could be one of the best picks in the draft at number three. This marks the end, in my opinion, of Jones up in New England. Most likely will be moved prior to the draft. Number four, Arizona. Marvin Harrison Jr. Hey, Arizona's got some pretty good draft picks the last couple of years here. They get a wide receiver for their $46.1 million quarterback. He's one of the best offensive players in the draft, if not the best offensive player. I got Marvin Harrison Jr. now taking the role of being one of the best wide receivers that Arizona has drafted since Larry Fitzgerald. That's the fourth pick out of Ohio State. Number five, Jim Harbaugh wants another wide receiver on the other side of Keenan Allen. Roma Adunza. From Washington, 
I think the Chargers take the Washington wide receiver, who I thought played exceptional football all year. And if you really look at it, both Roma and Harrison, I think both were right there with one another. And I think both were fabulous when it came to their seasons last year. Are you ready for this one? Number six, the New York Giants. J.J. McCarthy, quarterback, Michigan. I think the New York Giants dive in head first. And I think they take J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback who won the national championship. Okay? J.J. McCarthy to the Giants. Number seven, Tennessee. Joe Alt, part of the Alt family. A lot of years in the National Football League. Offensive tackle, Notre Dame. I think the Titans take Joe Alt at number seven. Number eight, Atlanta. Jared Verse, Florida State, edge rusher. One of the best edge rushers in the draft. I think he's going to make an impact in Atlanta. They need to get to the quarterback down there. Chicago, second first round pick. Number nine for their brand new quarterback, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. You get him a wide out, and you start both of these guys' process. And you begin the process of going young and building from the quarterback into wide receiver. Number 10, New York Jets. Talisi Fuaga, offensive tackle, Oregon State. Jets need old linemen. They've got one of the worst tackle groups offensively in the NFL. Their offensive line last year was atrocious. I do believe. The Jets take an offensive tackle here at 10. Number 11, Minnesota. Dallas Turner, edge rusher. Alabama. Is he Will Anderson? No. Is he close to Will Anderson? No. Can he be something that resembles Will Anderson? Yes. He's a good football player. Number 12, the Denver Broncos will take Bo Nix, quarterback, Oregon. This guy's been in the college ranks for a ton of years. A ton of years. Denver needs a quarterback. They're moving on. Russell Wilson is having a conversation today with the Pittsburgh Steelers via Zoom, from what I'm being told. Alfredo Roberts, the tight end coach, told me that they're having conversations um, with Russell Wilson today, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they're going to draft a quarterback, and I say it's Bo Nix. Hey, uh, Xander says Bo Nix is Drew Lock 2.0. I don't see it either. I, I don't see it either. Number 13, Las Vegas Raiders. Teron Arnold, cornerback, Alabama, outstanding football player. Backpedal, had a great combine and had a great season this past year for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Let's not forget something about Alabama. Alabama was a play away from winning the national championship. I mean, they beat Michigan. They're blowing Washington out of the water. They were one play away from winning the national title. So don't look at those Bama guys and go, well, Bama didn't really have that great a year. It went to overtime. It was one play away from them winning a national title. A lot of good players on that team. Number 14. Hopefully I don't assassinate this guy's name. New Orleans. 
Fashau, the kid from Penn State, I forgive me. Um, he was rated as one of the top offensive linemen at the, at the combines, and he had a really great season. Okay. Number 15, Indianapolis. Cunon Mitchell, quarterback, cornerback, Toledo, one of the fastest 40 yard dashes in the combines. I don't like the fact he went to Toledo. Still showed a lot at the combines. A lot of people liked him. Getting closer to number 22, 16, Seattle. Brian Murphy, defensive tackle, Texas. Seattle's got to stop the run, and they've got to get home, and this guy's the best interior tackle in the upcoming draft. He'll go number one to the te- to the Seahawks at number 16. Number 17, Jacksonville. Need another wide receiver for Trevor Lawrence. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. Might be a little too low, but I got him at 17 going to the Jacksonville Jags. Number 18, Cincinnati Bengals. Got to protect your guy. J.C. Langtham, offensive tackle, Alabama. Number 19, the Los Angeles Rams. Lahatu Latu, edge rusher, UCLA. Second best edge rusher in the draft. Third best edge rusher in the draft. Number 20, Pittsburgh. Amarius Mims, offensive tackle, Georgia. Makes sense. Continue to improve your old line, especially if you get Russell Wilson in the building. Number 21, Brock Bowers. Miami Dolphins, tight end, Georgia. So let me get this right. Tug of Viola is going to have Brock Bowers, Jalen Waddell, and Tyree Kill as offensive targets. <laughs> That's going to look crazy. And here we are at number 22. Philadelphia Eagles. Talk to a lot of people about this player. Um, I talked to a guy who worked him out at the Combines. I talked to his former coordinator. I'm very close with him. Um, I talked to some scouts who watched him work out. Who do you believe Big Sills is saying the Eagles take at number 22? Here we go. At number 22, my first installment of the Big Sills mock draft. Chop Robinson, edge rusher, Penn State, 6'3 and three quarters, 254, outstanding talent, ran a 445, had a 35 vertical, and everyone who saw him work out said he was insane in how good of a combine he had. And then when you put his tape on and you talk to Manny Diaz, and then you talk to Dan Morgan, and you talk to the people like Carl Dunbar, who worked him out. He says he's a spectacular talent. Spectacular. And remember something. Last year I said my favorite player in the draft was Devin Witherspoon, the defensive player of the year. The year before that I said you should take Trent McDuffie from Washington. You guys all hated that, and now he's an all-pro. So, And you didn't like the kid Lloyd who was the edge rusher from Utah. He's a stud in Jacksonville. You should hang with big sales here on this. Okay. 
You should hang with Big Sills on this. Guy runs a 4-4-8, and he's productive. Unlike Jordan Davis, who was not productive out of Georgia. So, Chop Robinson, 6'4", 254, edge rusher, Penn State. You have no depth at edge. You've got to replace Brandon Graham. And you're not going to draft here. Here's the other thing. You're not drafting a linebacker at 22. You're not drafting a safety at 22. And you're not going to draft a corner at 22 when you can get a corner in the second round. You're not. You're just not. That's not what he's going to do. Okay? Denny asks a great question. Chop as good as Micah? I think he's got more physical um, attributes than Micah Parsons. Yes. I think he's more physical, and I think he plays the run better because Micah doesn't play the run. Is he um, more versatile as or as versatile as Parsons? Yet to be determined. And depending on how Vic uses him, in my opinion. You see, you can move on from Hassan Reddick now because this guy does more, and he'll do it for less. You see, Hassan Reddick. He's not as good as this kid, Chop Robinson. He's a better tackler. He's a better run stopper. And he can cover and rush the passer. He does all three things. That's what you want to pay for. Not a one-trick pony. You move on from Reddick. And you put him on the other side. And you put him down on your defensive line. And look how young you are in your line. Jordan Davis. Jalen Carter, Chop Robinson, and Josh Sweat with a rotating tackle of Milton Williams. And if you want to keep Brandon Graham, he's your depth. I don't know. That doesn't sound horrible to me. Okay? And you still got to figure out what Nolan Smith is. Hey, he was one of the most impressive players at the Combines. And... He was one of the most impressive players in the nation last year. As a matter of fact, I think he had a better college career at Penn State than Michael Parsons did. Okay? Pickin is right. Pickin's right. You're, you're dead on. Hey, Pickin, the comparison of Micah Parsons and Chop Robinson is probably not the right one. It's more Miles Garrett. That is prototype and his body type are like 6'4", 255, somewhere in there like that, runs a 4'4". He's, he's, he's more like a Miles Garrett than, say, a Michael Parsons setup. You're right. I, I would – I would big picking. That sounds about right when I'm – what? do you agree with what I'm saying here? He's more Miles Garrett. Um. Then he is with, um, I like the kid. Plus, what you do is you talk to people who work them out. And you talk to people. Manny Diaz is a former head football coach at the University of Miami. And I've been friends with him for 32 years. He was your D coordinator at Penn State before he took the Duke job. And I talked to him last night about the kid. He said the kid's spectacular. He thinks he could be more productive than Parsons. One major difference between 22 and 23 was production off the edge. That's right. Completely true. Your edge production was down massively, okay? You, uh, sweat was off. Graham was off. You got nothing out of Nolan Smith. And the only person that gave you really any kind of production was Reddick, okay? Prince, I think so too. I think, you know, I mean, think of this. He's an edge rusher that runs a 4-4. And he's not injured. And he's 255. He doesn't look anything remotely close to what Nolan Smith looks like. I mean, he's 255. He's like Miles Garrett. Okay? If Chop's at 50, dude, he's not going to be, he may not be at 22. 50. <sighs> Number 23, Houston, Nate Wiggins, corner, Clemson. 24, the Cowboys. 
Tyler Guyton, they're losing, obviously, their offensive tackle. They're going to take Guyton at Oklahoma at number 24. The Green Bay Packers are going to take Troy Fantanu, Washington, offensive tackle. Number 26, the Buccaneers. Jackson Powers Johnson, center, Oregon. Number 27, Arizona Cardinals, their second number one pick in the first round. Kool-Aid McKintry, cornerback, Bama. Pretty good draft, it looks like, for Arizona. Number 28, Buffalo. Donald Mitchell, wide receiver, Texas. Number 29, Detroit. Zach Frazier, O-line, West Virginia. Number 30, Baltimore. Darius Robinson, D-line, Missouri. Number 31, the San Francisco 49ers. Enos Rankinstraw, cornerback, Missouri. And with the final pick in the NFL Draft, Big Sills Mock Draft 1, who do you think Kansas City is going to take with their first round pick at 32? Who do you think they're going to take? Who would you gamble on? On what Kansas City does at number 32. Prince. Say it, Prince. Prince, say it. I got a Donald Mitchell going to the Buffalo Bills at 28. Xavier Worthy, the fastest man on the planet at the Combines. Cheetah number two at 32. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes will have the fastest wide receiver in the league again. Tyree Kill Jr., Xavier Worthy at number 32. Shooter goes bust. Shooter, you don't you you're not understanding. You don't have to be a great wide receiver in Kansas City. Mahomes will make you one. Mahomes will make you one. Juju Smith-Schuster beat you. Did you hear from him ever again? Did you hear from Juju Smith-Schuster ever again after the Super Bowl? I, I didn't hear his name again. Mahomes will make him look good, and so will Andy. Correct. Right. Xavier Worthy going to the Eagles? That makes no sense. Hertz can't find a third wide out. Throw chart proves that. That that doesn't make sense. Juju Smith Schuster has no knees. He sucks. Well, he beat you. Juju Smith Schuster sucks and he helped them beat you. Okay. Well, that's my point. You see my point, Shooter? He sucks. He's no good. He'll beat you. That's my point. Okay? That's my point. Yeah, Trashberry got his ass handed to him by that guy who sucks. Whatever, dude. You can debate it all you want. You got the silver medal. They got the gold medal with Juju Smith-Schuster. Congratulations. Juju Smith-Schuster has a ring. There you go, Gary. Okay. Recap. Number one, Caleb Williams. Bears. Jaden Daniels. Commanders, two. Drake May. Patriots, three. Harrison Jr., four, Cardinals, five, I'm hacking his name up, Udunza, wide receiver, 
Washington Huskies. Number six, J.J. McCarthy, Michigan, quarterback. Number seven, Joe Wolt, Tennessee, Notre Dame. Falcons, Jared Verse, Edge, FSU. Bears, second, first round pick, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. Jets, take Fuaga, offensive tackle, Oregon State. Number 11, Vikings, Dallas Turner, Edge, Bama. Denver at 12 takes Bo Nix, quarterback, Oregon. 13, Raiders take Teron Arnold, cornerback, Bama. Number 14, New Orleans, Fahashnu, Penn State, offensive tackle. 15, Indian, Indianapolis, Mitchell, cornerback, Toledo. 16, Murphy, defensive tackle, Texas to the Seahawks. 17, the Jags take neighbors, wide out, LSU. 18, Bengals, J.C. Linkham, offensive tackle, Bama. 19, Rams, Latou, Edge, UCLA. 20, Steelers, OT, Georgia, Mims. 21, Brock Bowers, tight end, Georgia. Number 22, Eagles, Chop Robinson, Edge, Penn State. 23, Nate Wiggins, Clemson. Texans, Cowboys, Tyler Guyton. Offensive tackle, Oklahoma. 25, Fantandu. Offensive tackle, Washington, Packers. 26, Bucks, Jackson Powers, Johnson, center, Oregon. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Arizona, 27, Bama. Donald Mitchell, wideout, Texas. Buffalo Bills to help Josh, Josh Allen. Zach Frazier, O-line, West Virginia, Detroit, 29. 30, Baltimore, Darius Robinson, D-line, Missouri. Enos Rankin-Straw, cornerback, Missouri at 31. And Xavier Worthy, wide receiver at Texas. That's my first mock draft one. We put that here because we want to wait and see. Because what happens after free agency, that could change that list and most likely will change that list, depending who is going to become set free when it comes to salary cap casualties, what team, look, look at the Buffalo Bills. They cut five guys yesterday because they had to get out from that $44 million over the cap. They got, they, they want to be a player and retool because they're running out of time with Josh Allen here. Okay. No, I didn't put Cooper DeJean in there. And if you notice, I didn't put Michael Penix Jr. in my draft. I didn't see those guys at the Combines, nor have I heard anybody really raving about them at the Combines. I don't have Penix Jr. in there. So, and the problem that you had was, look at how many quarterbacks just in my mock draft. One, two, three, four. Five, you got five quarterbacks going in the top 12 picks. I mean, Michael Penix could be and make it six. All those good players keep sliding down, down to 22. Taylor goes, Nick sucks. No, he's, no. The problem that you have with Nick's, and here's my problem, but that fits Sean Payton. Sean Payton wants a more cerebral guy at that position. He doesn't want an athletic guy at that position. He wants a guy that can process information. And that's what that kid does. And that's one of the things he does well. Drew Brees was not a superstar athlete. Okay. That's not what he, that's, that's why the Russell Wilson thing never was going to work. Because that's not the style of quarterback he coaches. He doesn't coach that style. He coaches more of a traditional guy who sees the process, who takes the intel. He's more of that stuff. Okay? And, and, and by the way, do I think many of those quarterbacks are going to go on to superstar careers? I don't. I don't know if any of them do. I, I, I don't know. If any of them do, 
But I do like the kid after talking. And hey, do me a favor. When we take a time out a little bit later, do me a favor. Google him and get his combine workout. And then get some of his game tape from Penn State. It's out there, and you can see it on YouTube. He's got a highlight reel. And then watch him. And then you tell me what you think, how he looked at Penn State and how good he looked at Penn State. I think he looked exceptional. Um, And then he went to the combines, and he killed it. Um, He was the most athletic edge rusher, in my opinion, at the combines. Okay? I think he was the most athletic guy at the combines. Sills, would you still sign Chase Young? Not now. No. $13 million? Maybe. Maybe. Chase and you draft him? Maybe. Maybe. Something like that? You know where, hey, Kevin, can I tell you where I see Mac Jones going? I could see Mac Jones going to Tennessee. And Tannehill going to another place, maybe New England, and having the quarterback, Drake May, sit behind him. I don't know, something like that. Okay? Nix is not Tyson Hill. He has technique. Yeah, that's what Sean Payton wants a quarterback. They want a drop back guy. Sills, would you move up to get chop? Good question. Um, no, I'll tell you why, Cosmo. There's too many good offensive linemen. I, hey, I covet Chop Robinson, but if one of these great offensive linemen slide down to me, I'll take them. Look, there's about five old linemen in this draft that you could put in the major sandbox. Here, I'll, I'll tell you flat out. Um, wide receivers. There's some pretty good ones in there. There's probably around five good wideouts in the first round, and you're probably going to find even more in the second. It's a pretty good group. Um, I don't think it's exceptionally large at linebacker. If you notice, there's no LBs drafted in the first round here. I don't have one linebacker drafted in the first round. I don't think it's a first-round type of draft. I'm not saying they're not going to be stars. Fred Warner's a third rounder, okay? But you've got a draft to his tape and what he did at the Combines. You can't forecast what you think he's going to look like without looking at what he is. What he is is more important than what you think he's going to be, okay? Because too many people fall into that rabbit hole. What they'll do is, like, look at Nolan Smith. That was more of a projection. Would you guys agree with me? The Nolan Smith draft and the Nicobe Dean draft was forecasting what they thought that player would be. Do you agree? Not what he was. Okay? That was more of like analytic guys looking at his metrics and going, I think he's going to be this instead of what he is. He's often injured. He's undersized. Can he hang in today's NFL? And can he play right away? And can he at least be a backup? None of those questions have been answered with Dean or with Smith. And Dean's going into his third year, and you still don't know. Nolan Smith, to LJ's point, okay, rookie year. Guy didn't see a lot of snaps. Okay. Do you want to give him a mulligan? Sure. You have to give him a mulligan. You you drafted him 31. Okay, that's me too, Mike. I think Edrin Cooper and uh, Percy Wilson, I think those guys are more second rounders. And I think those guys would be great to take in the second round. I'd love to have Cooper or Wilson. Dude, if you got me, Chop Robinson with the 22nd pick, and you drafted either Cooper or Wilson, you went edge linebacker. Dude, you're talking about fixing your football team quickly. And then you sign Gabe Jr. from the Chiefs and you get yourself the kid. Um, who's the safety that's there in uh, Baltimore? 
that's available. The safety that's in Baltimore, who's that kid? And I'm not talking about the linebacker queen. He's too expensive. He's at 20 million bucks. Who's the guy? Who's the who's the safety in Baltimore that they have back there that is going to be a free agent? Stone, that's right. I take the so what? Look what you do here. You get Stone, you draft Edge, you draft in the second round a linebacker, Gay Jr. Dude, you're talking about bringing some pretty good football players into your program. I'll take Geno Stone. And then second, third, fourth, you draft some corners, and then you're looking at a third wide out. Yeah, you know what, brother? How long have I been saying Edrin Cooper? Month and a half now? People listen to Big Sills. Been saying that for a month and a half because I've been watching him all year. I think he's a hell of a player. Is he a first-round talent? I don't think so. But that doesn't mean he's not going to be an all-pro. Again, it has nothing to do with this. This is where this is about getting drafted and using your picks correctly. Hey. Could you have a guy be more productive for you in the fourth round than in the first round with this upcoming? Of course you can. Happens all the time. You're trying to get your draft right. I mean, look, if you had to redo your draft, Derrick Henry's not a second round pick. But you were smart to know that he's a quality talent that fell. That's understanding the draft. That's getting the draft. That's why when you're looking at it, that's why I'm not, hey, I'm not married to Chop. But what I am married to is who he is and the need. Remember something. I'm not married to any one of these players. I'm married to a need. What was the one thing that Vic Fangio did well in Miami last year? That was breaking the Miami Dolphins' pass rushing record as a team. Well, you need more help at getting home. Because if you're going to play that style of football again, remember, you're not changing your style of defense. You have to have better players. Sweat has to get home. Reddick, if he's still here, has to get home. You need another guy to get home. Your two interior tackles need... You know, I'll tell you this. There's a couple of things that really hurt that team last year. You never replaced Javon Hardgrave's 11 sacks and 60 tackles. You did not replace that. Now, look, Sills, are you saying that the Eagles should have spent $20 million on a DT? No, because I like Carter. I think he has a higher ceiling, and he's going to be a better player overall. So I'm okay with eating it a little bit there. The problem was Davis not showing up and relying on a 33-year-old DT. That was That's the problem that happened. And you didn't have the depth of Linville Joseph and Adama Kitsu helping you out. They were limited. And one of the reasons it fell apart at the end, you had two guys, one is out of shape, and the other guy has a rookie wall hit him. And then you were relying on Milton Williams and Fletcher Cox. That's why teams ran the ball on you. And you don't bring pressure. So you got to get home with guys. Okay? A track says Jalen will bounce back. Yeah, okay. Another wishful thinking comment. Okay? Another wishful thinking comment. Okay? Jurgens haven't taken reps all season. Kelsey only practiced one day a week. I, I get it. I Look, I think it's going to be a massive drop-off, but I do not believe it's going to kill you. I think the kid's going to play well there. I'm going to make some... Eagle predictions here in a minute. So how you look at the draft. Now, look, when you get here, when you get down to 22, let's say out of the top 10, you've got about six guys that you're looking at. And I would, I would say this here, here are some of the guys that I'd be looking at if I were the Eagles and I'm sitting at 22. Um, would I look at Brock Bowers? If Brock Bowers fell to me, would I draft him? How do you pass on Brock Bowers at 22? You're going to take a lesser player? 
If Brock Bowers is sitting at 22, shit, I got him going one spot before. Would you trade up with the Dolphins to get Bowers? I think the Dolphins would jump all over that. Okay? Brock Bowers with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. If he's down at 22, do you take him? So if I'm the Eagles, I'm looking at him. You have no production on your tight end position. Okay? You have not really outside of a guy who gets hurt. He is productive when he's out there. Can you imagine having Bowers and Goddard at your tight end position? Would the Eagles think of drafting a tight end in the first round? I think somebody with that ability, you think you have to. Um, I could see them looking at J.C. Langtham. I could see them looking at Malik Neighbors. Kool-Aid's going to be there for him. Nate Wiggins. Jackson Powers Johnson. Something you want to think about? Leaving Jerkins over at guard. Like they did Landon. Okay. Hey, Dan, what is more important? A wide receiver or corner? Corner. Corner. I can win Super Bowls and games without top flight wideouts. I, I don't have to have a top flight wideout to win games. I don't. That's if you think your quarterback's not good enough. Okay? If you have a guy that can move the sticks. I mean, that's my big issue with Jalen Hurts. You have so much talent around him. I mean, you put any of the other quarterbacks in Philadelphia, they win Super Bowls. He, there's nothing more you can really do for him. So you're going to blame the coaches, okay? Jesus, criminy. You mean to tell me that A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Mali um, Jordan Mulatto, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Landon Dickerson, DeAndre Swift, you couldn't overcome some shitty play calling with all those pro bowlers? That's on the quarterback, too. That's on the QB. Every quarterback go through goes through some shitty play calling. Right? I mean, you got to overcome that. That's why you're making $50 million. Okay? Nick Sirianni has handicapped Jalen's career. You know, hey, Prince... Excuse me, um, a track. I think that too many voices in the building have handicapped his career. There's too many coordinators, all trying to do the same thing. You got a new coordinator coming in who's going to do the same shit as last year, just in a different voice. It doesn't make sense sometimes. Sirianni was his first offensive play caller. <clears throat> Shane Steichen was his second. He had two in one year. Then he had Brian Johnson. Now he has Kellen Moore. That's four and three years of starting. Saying all the same things in a different way. It's confusing. Actually, some of you probably go, well, Sills, they're doing the same playbook. What's so confusing about it? Hey, man, it's like being a surgeon. Every surgeon has a different way of doing an operation. Everyone does. Everyone has a different way of playing a three technique or a two technique or a one technique. Or getting off the ball. Or, or shadowing a wide receiver down the sidelines like Darrell Revis used to. Everyone's got a technique that they're comfortable doing because it helps them get home. Darrell Revis is one of the greatest cornerbacks in the history of the league. You know why? He, he, had this, he had this technique that he would herd you towards the sidelines. And by the time the ball got to you, you had this much room to operate 
between the sidelines and him because he was so physical, fast, and he had great long arms. He's truly one of the greatest corners that's ever played. He would herd you over because of his size, and he could stay with you because of his speed, and he could keep you at length because of his reach. He was physically set up. His body structure was great. His ability, his, his savantness of the knowledge of the game. He's a great football player. He was really a great football player. Had all the fundamentals that took to be a superstar player. Okay? Um, if they keep Reddick, do they still draft Chop? Yeah, of course. He's on a rookie deal. You need depth. Hey, remember this, Matt. Chop is not Chop Robinson. Chop Robinson is not in the room when it comes to physics. He's the replacement for Graham. Okay? And what's the thing that you can do with him that you can't do with Reddick? You could put his hand in the dirt and stand him up. You can't do that with Reddick. Let's be real. This organization is so back ass, so ass backwards, and such a cluster, you know what? Whoever the quarterback was, they would force that quarterback to play at their weakness. Just makes no sense to me, too. Exactly, man. You spend all that equity and all that money in your offensive line, and you turn around and you get away from your strength of your football team. It just makes no sense to me. I love wearing my Revis Pats jersey when I'm in New York. <laughs> Shooter. Wow. You like breaking them off. He was a great football player, man. He's just a great football player. Because if Reddick isn't gone this year, he's certainly gone next. That's correct. You've got the replacement. You're hoping that Smith takes over for Reddick. And you're hoping that Chop takes over for Graham. That's what I'm that's my transition. Scouts I listened to were not lying about either Worthy or Chop. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. I talked to the guy who worked them out. He was my teammate. Whoever you heard, you heard it through some guy's potential fantasy made up thing. I talked to the guy who worked him out and coached him, Manny Diaz and Carl Dunbar. Who'd you talk to? Let me guess. Some dickhead on the internet. Okay. Sure. Whatever, dude. I'm sure that panned out. <laughs> um, Sales, do you really see them taking powers if he drops? I don't know how you pass on him. I don't know. I, I don't know how if he sits there at 22 and Brock Powers is sitting there and I'm looking at Chop Robinson, I'm going, who's the better player? I mean, does this help Jalen? Yes. Is is this guy the heir apparent to Goddard? Yes. Is he on a rookie deal? Yes. Can I move off of Goddard, who makes $15 million? Yes. Again, why would you keep Goddard if you can get a better ball player at a cheaper price? Do you guys think that these guys draft these guys to fall in love with them? That's not quite how this works. If there's a better player than Dallas Goddard at 22, they'll draft him, dump Goddard, and get better and younger and cheaper. We already got to get Dallas Goddard. Dude, at $15 million, he's not a $15 million tight end. That guy is not a $15 million tight end. I'm not paying that. Bradbury's not a $14 million corner, nor a slay at $12 million. You got overpriced guys on your defense and on your team at many positions. Is Reddick? Reddick wants to be overpaid. He's not more than a $16 to $15 million guy because he's limited. He's limited. I do want to see, hey, a lot of people like this guy, Isaiah Rogers. I want to see him play. I do. I want to see him play. 
Move off AJ the following year. Teams have proved they can win without two big time wideouts. I'm totally moving off him next year. I have no problem with that. Bill Bill thinks you keep a twenty five million dollar wide receiver. You can't name one that's won a Super Bowl. You can't name one that has won a Super Bowl when he was given a like Mike Evans didn't win. Mike Evans wasn't making top flight money when he won that Super Bowl three years ago with the Bucks. Tyree Kill when he won the Super Bowl, he was not making gigantic money. He didn't make gigantic money till he went to Miami. Cooper Cup signed that deal in the offseason after they had won the Super Bowl with the Rams. Devontae Adams has done dick. A.J. Brown hasn't won a Super Bowl. All these $25 million wide receivers haven't delivered shit. Why would you pay for one? What's the point? What's the point? You you got you, he's a by the way, no shade on him. He's a great player. He's a great player. AJ Brown's not going to deliver a Super Bowl for you. He's not. Jalen Hurts is going to deliver one for you. If there's anybody in your offense that will deliver one, it's him, not the wide receiver. You don't win championships from the perimeter in. You win them from the inside out. Seals, could you imagine Smitty Bowers in the same team together? It'd be incredible. Bowers, Goddard. Bowers, Goddard, Devontae Smith, and A.J. Brown this year is scary. Okay? Tanner McKee is a practice dummy. The most popular people in the National Football League are the backup stiffs on every NFL team. Tanner McKee is a stiff. Okay? Okay, he's wonderful. What round did he go? Seven? So you're telling me he's the next Tom Brady. Sure. Because that happens all the time. That was, hey, that was like the star of Bethlehem. Tom Brady in the seventh or the sixth round that he went. That's like finding the star of Bethlehem. Oh, look, there's a star of Bethlehem. <laughs> has to be somebody special. How many times does that star of Bethlehem come around? Once. And that thing comes around once. All right. My big sills. 13 Eagle predictions for 2024. And I have my NFL predictions. Plus at 330, Philly 500, backed by popular demand. And at 430, Angelo Cataldi will join us. Loaded show as always. Big shows this week. We really appreciate everybody coming aboard. Hit the like button. You keep it here, National Football Show. bubbles and the bubbly go for the story and the stories go for the win go to ocean casino resort book your trip at theoceanac.com philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life 
We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. $50 million in cap space will be an awful lot of money to do a lot of work with. You see that Von Miller took an $8 million pay cut? He's smart. Back end of his career, he took an $8 million pay cut because he knows he's in a position to potentially win a Super Bowl. And he's not going to get gigantic money in the open market. It's pretty smart. But they gave him an incentive. If he gets 10 and a half sacks, he'll get back to 17-3. That's smart. Aging player, that's what you do for aging players. You give them an opportunity to make their money back and help the team in the process. Look, we want you here. But this is a financial business. You can see, people don't get that, and they think they can just sign people that they like. Like, again, no disrespect to Bill. He likes Patrick Queen. That's so far out of the realm of possibilities for the Eagles. You're going to – and it's not their behavior. $20 million for a linebacker in Philadelphia? When you haven't drafted a linebacker at – Or in the first round since 1979, and you don't value the position, but all of a sudden you're going to change course? And you're talking about Zach Cunningham having been a good player last year? That opportunity is not a realistic thing. McKee or Spider Rico, what's the difference? Thank you. Right? That's not a possibility. Now, if you're talking about what teams – look at Baltimore. Baltimore spent $20 million on Roquan Smith. Well, when you make a trade for that guy, you know full well you're paying that guy that money. Remember something. It was Baltimore that gave him the deal. It wasn't Chicago. Chicago wasn't going to give him the 20 a year and the $100 million deal. They traded him to Baltimore. Baltimore with Eric DaCosta and Ozzie Newsome Gave them the $100 million and the $20 million a year. They knew they were doing that. You weren't going to keep Roquan Smith for $8 million bucks. He was. He would be on the open market. Wasn't going to happen. Baltimore is an organization that will do that. Because they know the value at linebacker, especially in today's NFL. With Why is linebacker such a major position? And yet people don't address it. And I'm going to sh- I'm going to read something here to you. Because the tight end position is becoming so prevalent. If you don't have good linebackers in today's NFL, you can't cover tight ends. You're, it's a mismatch every time you line a, your defense up against a team with a Kittle, uh, the kid up in Baltimore, the Eagles. If you don't have good linebackers, you're not going to be able to hang with today's NFL. Today's NFL is tight end and wide. 
You know, I'll make a point to you about the wide receiver position. Is it me? But is the wide receiver position in the NFL now becoming like the quarterback position? These guys are really big time paid. Justin Jefferson's going to touch $30 million a year. How can you build a team around two guys, one making 50 and the other making 30, when you got a $220 million or $250 million salary cap and you're paying almost $100 million in two guys? How's that possible? I mean, if you have a $50 million quarterback like Hertz, and you say, hypothetically, you want to do what some of these guys in Philly want to do. They want to keep AJ. AJ's going to demand. He's going to demand money like Justin Jefferson. He's not far off his numbers. That's $30 million. You're going to keep AJ Brown for $30 million on his next deal? That's 80 million bucks. Two guys on a 53-man roster. I mean, you got to pay your old lineman, don't you? Hey, that's right. MG's right. Philly 500. That'll be at the bottom of the hour. Angelo Cataldi will be with us at 4.30 Eastern. All right. You want me to do my 2024 Eagle predictions, my Big Seals Eagle predictions first? Or my NFL Bold predictions of 2024? We had some pretty good ones last year. What do you want first? Eagles 2024 or NFL? Make sure you can finish Eagles prediction. Good segment to post. We will get it there. I'm like Ron Burgundy. Sorry, Xander. I'm like Ron Burgundy over here, reading off prompter. Let's do the let's do the Eagles. Here we go. <clears throat> And these are the Big Sills 2024 Philadelphia Eagles. Bold predictions for the upcoming NFL season. Number one. The Eagles will use one of their third-round picks to draft a quarterback. Why? How he always hedges his bets. How he always hedges his bets. Could be a third or fourth rounder. But what it'll do is it'll raise some eyebrows. Third or fourth round, hey, you guys thought Jalen Hurts was drafted to be Carson Wentz's backup. What's the difference with Howie Roseman drafting a backup for Jalen? I'm not, hey, they did it before. Hey, LJ, LJ, what's the guy's name in Detroit that played at Tennessee? What's that guy's name that played at Tennessee? He had a knee injury. I really like the kid. What's his name? Hend um, Herndon? What was that kid's name? Chris, probably fourth. Still raises an eyebrow. Hendon Hooker. That's it. That Somebody like that. Fits the style, won't be off the reservation if you get a guy. And he's cheap. And they've done it before. 
They gave Carson Wentz an enormous contract. Then they drafted Hurts. And they used a second rounder. So don't say they haven't done it, because they have. Hey, how do you know you don't develop like a guy like Snoop Hunley? And you got a guy like that that could walk in there and play for you if you need. There's nothing wrong with that. Personally, I think a team should draft a quarterback in every draft. I, I mean, you never know when you land on Brady or Russell Wilson. Okay, you never know. <clears throat> and the Eagles love to hedge their bets. Okay? Right, Hurts ran away with the job. Okay, I, I'm not drafting a guy to take his gig. I'm drafting a guy to hedge my bets. And I think a general manager should draft a quarterback. Now, I'm not saying in the first two, three rounds. I'm saying you should take a shot at a guy because you never know when you land on a dude that can help your football team win ball games. Okay. Number two, Big Sills, 2023 Eagle Bold Predictions. The Eagles will bring back C.J. Gardner-Johnson to play in their secondary. Whatever you think of the kid, the kid was a good ball player. Led the NFL in interceptions, okay? And you're going to get him cheaper. We could pay A.J. $30 million a year as long as the cap hit isn't that bad like Jalen's. Okay? Ray Davis, UK, running back, is a player. <laughs> Carton three, Philly zero. Like it. He is LJ. I'm good there with that. Gardner Johnson. Coming back to the fold of the Philadelphia Eagles. Number three. Jalen Carter. Will have double digit sacks in 2024. Number four, bold prediction for the Eagles. Milton Williams will beat out Jordan Davis. I can't believe I'm going to make a bold prediction here because I'm going to make this bold prediction because at the end of the day, I want this other thing to happen. Okay? Five. Jalen Hurts will throw for 30 or more touchdowns in 2024. Number six. Big Sills. Bold predictions, Eagles 2024. Devontae Smith will have more receiving yards than A.J. Brown. Number seven. Pinocchio Sirianni will be fired in week 14. And Kellen Moore will be named interim head coach. Number eight, Cam Jurgens. We'll make the Pro Bowl. Number nine. Big Sills. Bold predictions for the Eagles.
Nolan Smith will officially become a flop. Number 10. Nicobe Dean, for the second straight year, will finish the season on IR. Number 11, Dallas Goddard gets his first 1,000-yard season as a tight end for the Eagles. Number 12, Vic Fangio will have the Eagle pass defense in the top 15. And number 13, at the end of the regular season, Bill Belichick will be named the head football coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Those are the big sales 2024. Bold predictions. Recap. Eagles will draft a quarterback with either a third or fourth round pick in this draft. Eagles will bring back Gardner Johnson. Jalen Carter will have double-digit sacks. Milton Williams will beat out Jordan Davis. Jalen Hurts will throw for more than 30 touchdowns this year. Devontae Smith will have more receiving yards than A.J. Brown. Bring me Bill. Bye-bye, Fredo. (laughs) Pinocchio Sirianni will be fired by week 14. Cam Jurgens is a pro bowler. Nolan Smith officially goes into the Howie Roseman Island of Misfit Bust draft picks. Number 10, Nicobe Dean officially will end his second season on IR. Dallas Goddard gets his first 1K season. Fangio will have your defense, pass defense. In the top 15. And at the season's end. When it's Black Monday. The next day. Bill Belichick will be named. The new head football coach. Of the Philadelphia Eagles. Those are the 2024 it, as Bill Colomid says earlier in the day, big sales, bold predictions. How you doing? <laughs> um, oh, Sirianni fired after playoff exit. I don't know. Okay. I think all the Georgia players should throw a blanket party on sales. All I hope they do is just show up. I just want one of them to be great. So far, none of them are. Well, Carter, I'm, you know, I'm I got high expectations. The rest of them haven't done shit yet. Okay. Woo! Yes, sir. No, no, no. I, I, Roseman's not getting fired. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, hey, you, you, do you know where? Do you know where Pinocchio Sirianni is going to be coaching next? He's going to be coaching one of those flag football teams that are getting ready for the Olympics. <laughs> or he's going to be coaching some seven-on-seven seven boys and girls football team. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. He's, or either that, he's going to be a gardener or work in a nursery. I mean, that'd be funny, right? Whatever happened to Nick? You know those segments? Whatever happened to Nick? Yeah, he's in a monastery somewhere up in Northern California. He's at some shroom factory now, planting mushrooms <laughs> for uh, for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, he's planting mushrooms for Aaron Rodgers. Right? Oh, I got well, those are good. Those are good. Okay, those are the bold predictions. I'm gonna do those. I'm gonna do those for um, for for um, Philly 500 here. Graham on WIP just said we don't know Davis yet, and he will get him. He will get him right. Brandon Graham begging for a job. Interesting. So you don't know Jordan Davis yet, and he's been in your team for three years. Jesus. Jalen Carter showed, showed more promise in one season than Jordan Davis has in three. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> well, you know, if you're Jordan Davis, you just got to stay out of the Popeye's line. Okay, I mean, or you got to stay out of the White Castle line. Well, at least don't do me a favor, Jordan. Don't eat the Wawa pizza because I heard it blows. So don't don't go there with that. So I just did my Philadelphia Eagles bold predictions for 2024, and I'm gonna bring in my guy, Philly 500, backed by popular demand. By the way, I mean, oh yeah, how about that? Hey, do you know <laughs> people are like? So, hey, that's great you get Phil Sims on. That's great you got Dyson on. That's great you got Gullick on. You know, <laughs> Warren Moon on yesterday. It's real good. What's really 500 coming on? I'm like, come on. Man. You're like, really? You're like, a, you're like a rock star now. Tell that to my wife. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll earn some, 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 some good fortune over here. But, no, I appreciate it. I mean, you know, uh, that's definitely an honor man it's an honor to come on and it's an honor that that people would actually want to hear what my stupid ass has to say so that's what i say that's what i say about myself for 30 years why does anybody give a shit what i say i have no hey 30 years and then you would be shocked who calls my boss <laughs> so i've heard yeah. yeah oh this is uh yeah yeah hey and nobody at nbc philadelphia can come on my program anymore. They can really? go on everybody else's, only mine. Wow. How about that? That's yeah. crazy. Everyone else has a free pass. Yeah, you can go on. That Paul Dumbowitz, he gets a, he, he gets to go on anywhere he wants to. So so what do they say? You can't go on uh, Big Sills because um, he says stuff that we don't agree with? Yes. Oh, my God. It's not personal. I don't know those people from a can of paint. I know, but I mean, at the way I see it, everybody's entitled. Listen, you say things I definitely don't agree with at times, but, uh, you know, you got to respect other people's But that's opinions. the beauty of it. Right, exactly. I have to get well, your take on the Kelsey okay. retirement speech and him calling it just your, just your takeaway from what you saw the other day when he had that press conference. It was very hard not to get emotional. I mean, I, I was driving – home for uh from work you know for lunch to come film and i'm i'm crying myself for the car people are driving by wondering what the hell's wrong with this guy with but i was emotional i mean uh you know jay uh kelsey is a legend i mean he is now up there in the echelons of the brian dawkins and the randall cunninghams and 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 and, and all those guys man you got to put them up there with the with the greats um 
Uh, what I really liked about what he said was when he explained what it takes to play in Philly. I think that was a message to some of his fellow teammates, to be quite honest with you. You know, I'll throw these names at you. In the last 25 years, who has been the most revered Eagle? Kelsey, Reggie White, that's probably 25 years, or Brian Dawkins? Oof. I I think I think recent with recent bias you're going to put Kelsey up there. You, you have to put Kelsey up there. I think in terms of like when I think of like the legends of the greats of the greats, I I think Toppy, I think got to go Big Narek and then Reggie White. Those would still be my top 2. But um yeah, I think Jason Kelsey makes a good case to to be up there as as far as revered by the fans. Yeah. I'll tell you this, when you put Bednarik's name and Kelsey's name, I think you're not off. Now, Chuck played center too, but that's not what he was really revered at. He was more revered at the Mike Backer as one of the great. But you got to remember something during his time. The NFL's faces of the league were not quarterbacks. It was Buckus in Chicago, Niski in Green Bay, Huff in New York, and Bednarik in Philly. And that was the essence of the league at the time with those faces. And if anybody really personified what Philadelphia was, was Chuck and Kelsey. And I also happen to think because Reggie went to Green Bay and Carolina, that kind of puts a little bit more of the water in his argument, you know, and it kind of dilutes it a bit. Dawkins probably is in that conversation. But, yeah, man, I mean, Xander brought something up. Um, Philly, he said that he goes, he gets it. He was great, and he loved playing here. I mean, all the things embodied it. He got it, and he he kind of checked all the he checked all the boxes. He did. I don't think there's another city though that would put a a center like literally a center as high as they they do in Philly. You know, Um, if you're if you're talking in terms of like best players to ever play, I mean, yeah, of course, Benerik and Ray. I look at Reggie White and Benerik as top ten. You know. Um, so they're higher up in terms of uh, how good they were. But as far as like the fans love, I mean, Jason Kelsey only played for one team. He only played with the Eagles. And I think that's a huge, huge factor. I did my first mock draft. And here's the kid I landed on. And I'm going to try to pitch him to you. And I'm going to see what you think about him. I talked to his college head football coach who I've known for 30 years. I talked to um, the guy who worked him out at the Combines in Carl Dunbar. He was a Steelers defensive line coach. And I talked to Dan Morgan, the general manager, new general manager of the Carolina Panthers. And I came up with Chop Robinson. He runs a 4'4". He's 6'4". He's 254. He's an edge rusher. Manny Diaz, I spoke to, he was his coordinator. And he says, you know, don't compare him to Micah Parsons. Compare him more to Miles Garrett. He's more in that conversation because you can put his hand in the dirt and you can stand him up. And what he also does for you, he's cheap, he's young, he's good. And you you replace Brandon Graham with him. So your front four would be Sweat, Davis, Carter, and Chop, Robinson, and if you're able to keep Reddick, then you got Reddick as an outside pass rusher and you improve your pass rushing because Philly, at the end of the day, they're not going to do anything different than they did a year ago. Your front four has got to get home. And yeah. the problem oh, last yeah. year was Graham didn't get home. Right. Sweat didn't get home. The interior guys didn't get home because you couldn't replace the 11 sacks that Hardgrave gave you. What's your take yeah. on them going? And again, am I, am I married to him? No. Because if Brock Bowers falls uh, in front of him, I mean, you're, I don't believe you could pass on Brock Bowers either mm-hmm. if he's sitting right. there at 21. So how do you look at that position? I think I think you're absolutely right about, about the pass rusher. I still think at the end of the day, regardless whether it's Vic Fangio or Jim Johnson, uh, the end of the day, the Eagles' bread and butter on defense is, is the, that line and to get home and you got to get to the quarterback. 
the Eagles did not do a good job getting to the quarterback. I think we were like the one of the worst teams on third down at sacking the quarterback. This makes your secondary a lot worse. Uh, you know, the secondary and the pass rush, they, they help each other out. So I think that essentially I believe that one of the big needs the Eagles have is they have to get another pass rusher. Uh, and that's including keeping Reddick. Okay, you have to keep Reddick and get another pass rusher. Otherwise, you need to get two pass rushers. So I think in this draft, I think the most likely scenario is the Eagles are going to take a, a pass rusher with that first pick. So I'm all for it. Now, my only thing is this. If you have four or five, let's say four defensive ends go, you know, in the first round before you pick, and you're sitting there with the best corner on the board, I, I might have to go that, that way. But I think most realistic is a pass rusher. And I like Chop Robinson, so I, I would agree with you, and I'd have no problem with that. I'm See, the, 20, the 22 pick, and the reason I said that I'm not married to him, but I really like him at that pick, you know, you know, you don't really have, you, you know, direction, and you don't really have your own destiny in your hands at twenty-two. You've got to have a game plan with five guys or six guys in the sandbox that you look at because you're almost in a position there, right, with best player available. So, like you yeah. said, if there's a great corner in there, and Chop's the third best pass rusher behind Verse and the kid Dallas Turner. Do you go third best pass rusher versus the second best uh, corner? I'm it, not doing that. See, well, it depends. To me, it's purely on who who do you have rated. High. I think the first round, you know, in most cases, you've got to go. You've got to be loyal to your board. If if the best player at that point is the fourth best pass rusher and he's on, take him. If the corner is better, take him. But I think the Eagles they they got to take talent they have multiple holes where they don't have playmakers especially defensively take the best player if that's a pass rusher take them if it's a corner take them and i don't care if it's the third best pass rusher left if if four, the top four best pass rushers are all better than all the corners on the board take them but but i don't i think the eagles get in trouble when they try to get too cute and they try to look for a position of need in the first round it hurts them all the time here, here, here's the problem that I have with what they did in the last two drafts. I mean, think about what they did with um, Nolan Smith and N'Kobe Dean. They did too much forecasting and not looking right. at who the kid is right now. You know, I mean, they went right. like this. Hey, we get a steal with the kid. The kid looks like he could be this. He could maybe be this. That's when the analytic guys get in the way, in my opinion. Nolan Smith, another guy was hurt at Georgia his last year and senior year at Georgia. And right. you're looking at these guys, and you do too much for it. Like you say, you overcook it. That's overcooking yeah. it. I want a kid who could play today, right, right now, who could come in here and help that football team. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I want somebody that can help this football team right away too. And, and I think there are players to, to do that. But at the same time, uh, you know, I, I want somebody that, that's going to be there long term. I mean, we talk about, you know. You know, AJ Brown. You talk if you look at all the salary cap guys that are on our team, all the highest paid guys, most of them are from other teams because we don't draft well. So if you don't draft well, then you have to go hide that mistake by going out and signing a bunch of free agents. So I want what I want in the first round is I want a guy that can I can plug in day one and play for the next five, six years. So I that, that's what I need. I think they gotta stick best talent available. And and I think it'll tend to be probably most likely it's going to be an edge rusher. I think that's where they'll go. But I, I just want I just want talent, Sills. I want I want some playmakers, especially on defense. I don't think we've got any of those guys. What do you make it a 50 million potentially that they could have as salary cap? Do you think they'll they're gonna be high end players, middle of the road players? Do you think they're going to go out and splash on someone? Or do you think, again, they're going to be frugal on defense? No, I think they're going I think they're going to make a big splash. I think it's going to be a giant splash. I think they're going to spend, and they're going to spend a lot of money. The question I have is, where are they going to do it? Because I'm, I have a weird feeling. 
I have a weird feeling they're going to get guys that were somebody we're not expecting. Like the big signing is going to be out of like left field. Like I really think, and I said this last year, and I, and and they, I think they should have done this last year, but I really thought that you should have strengthened your offense even more because your defense was coming along. It was in transition. And what I would like to see the Eagles do is go out and actually go out and get a Saquon Barkley. Go make your offense where you're scoring 30 points a game and then use the draft and get defensive players that you play right away, that you can play right away and learn. And, you know, enough of these one-year deals. I don't need four or five guys on one-year deals and then the season's over and here we go again. I, I want to fix it. I think the Eagles are going to do some things a little differently than they've done in the past. And I think that's going to include linebackers and running backs. That's just my bold prediction. I'm going to throw some of my bold predictions off of you here in a minute. Um, do you want BG back? Yeah, for the right price. You know, it, he's got to be the right price. I look at Brandon Graham as a fourth pass rusher now. So I have Reddick, Sweat. I still think I need somebody to be that number three guy. And then I have Brandon Graham. So for the right price, I would love to bring him back. I'll throw one thing at you because you said bold. And they're going to do something exceptional. Would you give up the 22nd pick this year and next year for Patrick Sertain? This year? I would think about it. I would definitely think about it. He's young enough. 24. Problem, and you yeah, got two he's, years. He's you got a rookie deal this year and fifth-year yeah. option next year. I, I would consider it. I, two two first-round picks. Uh, he, Denver – Denver is either Denver's going to take a quarterback and they're going to take Bo Nix, I think, because mm -hmm. that's the kind of style of quarterback he likes. He doesn't like mobile guys. He likes drop back seven step guys. And so I think they have him and they're going to need draft picks. And I think they're going to want to get more wideouts in there. And so they're going to want to try to acquire more wide receivers and try to build that offense up like they did down in um, New Orleans. Remember, he's going to make that offense in Denver. Look like that offense with an Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, guys like that. He wants it to look something similar to that. Could be some old linemen too. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, right? I, I like Sertan. Uh, I I would consider it. You know, what worries me though about about some of these corners is you get these corners and then you don't use them right. Like, what's the point of having these guys with all that money and then you don't use them uh, to to the best of their ability? So. Um, I, I, it's something I would consider. I, I don't know if I would do it though. Two first rounds is expensive, but then I think about it and go, well, who's picking Howie Roseman's picking, um, you know, Sertan, we know what he is. So uh, here, here, might, here's but, why you have to give up two ones for a corner. He should pay a price for his fuck ups at corner. I mean, every right? corner he's ever drafted has been a bomb. And so if you're not getting the position right, you're going to have to pay for the absolute poor valuation that you've had for the last 24 years at the position. You just are not going to go to Denver <clears throat> and go to Denver and go, hey, here's a first rounder and a fifth for certain the best lockdown all pro corner. That's not going to happen. No, no. I, I mean, I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to trade them anyways, but just, just speculating. I mean, I, I would definitely consider it. Uh, Sertan is, is an absolute stud. Um, you know, you're going to have to pay him what you said in two years, his contract's basically the same situation as Devonte Smith because they came out of the same draft. So you're going to have to pay both those guys at the same time. Uh, it, yeah. It's something I would consider for sure. And Landon Dickerson. And yeah, you're gonna have to pay Landon Dickerson. You, you to probably gotta Landon pay too. Landon first, to be honest. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna throw these. Now these are bold predictions, so you can laugh at them or not laugh at them here. Okay. Here's my first one. Bold prediction: Big Sills 2024 Eagles. The Eagles will draft a quarterback in either the third or fourth round, and I say this because. They've done it before. They drafted Hertz in the second. Howie likes to hedge his bets. They're, they need a quarterback there. He's on a rookie deal. He'd be cheaper. Mm -hmm. 
and it's kind of a safety net. I I'm gonna say, um, I I I see where you're going there. I'm gonna say not on that one. I, I I'm not with you on that one, because Howie Roseman has not fought Jalen Hurts and his wife in the in the locker room while he was throwing up because of the concussion. I think a lot of the reason why they drafted Jalen Hurts was because of what happened to Carson Wentz in that playoff game for Seattle and the whole fallout from it. So I, I'm going to say they're not going to take the quarterback then. So you're cool with Tyler McKee? I'm not saying I'm cool with him. I'm just saying I don't think they're going to draft a quarterback in the third or fourth round. Okay. Number two, the Eagles bring back – C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Oh, yeah. I'm down with this big time. Yeah, I think there's a good chance that, that it happens, actually. Um, I think C.J. Gardner-Johnson should never have been let go to begin with, and I think he has a certain swagger that I like that this team lacked last year, and I'm all for that. I, I think that would be great. And he's cheaper. And he's cheaper. And he's cheaper now, a lot because of people... he missed a lot of football. That's true. That's true. A lot of people are, are talking about Justin Simmons right now, and I get it because he played with Vic Fangio. But, you know, there's the case. He's 31, you're with, dude. You're dealing with a 30-year-old guy again. It's like that's what I want to get away from. I want to get too. away from one-year deals. I want to get away from older guys that give you two years, and then you got to replace them again. Absolutely. So I'm all for C.J. Garner-Johnson. Number three, Big Seals, Bold Predictions, Eagles 2024. Jalen Carter will have double-digit sacks. I like it. I, I think that's very possible. I You know, I think he he, he faded down the stretch, but um, he was off early in the season to a good start. I expect him to take a giant step. I like it. I'm, I'm down with that one. Number four, you might not be down with this one. Milton Williams will beat out Jordan Davis. No, Jordan Davis is coming, man. Jordan Davis is learning to diet. He's learning to nutrition. He's, he's he's staying away from me. I introduced him to eggnog during the holidays. That was the problem. It's all over, man. Jordan Davis, I'm not giving up on him. But I will say it's a make or break year for him. He has to show us something. I, I don't care what anybody says. I'm sorry. I've seen this guy early in the year. I've seen what he could do and his potential. He's got to find He's got to find it inside to, to want to be great because he's got all the tools to do it. So I, I look at it make or break year, and I'm, I'm going to stand I'm gonna stand behind my man, Jordan Davis. One more year. Number five, Jalen Hurts will throw for 30 or more touchdowns in 2024 under Kellen Moore. Yeah, I like it. I think Jordan – I think Jalen Hurts is going to have a, a, a big comeback year um, this year, I think the addition of Kellen Moore, I think is going to be really good. I, I like the way Kellen Moore and his offenses had spread the ball out before. So I think, I think with the talent and the weapons that we have, I think he'll get the, the most out of it. So I'm going to say, yeah, I agree. Number six, big sales, bold prediction Eagles, 2024. Devontae Smith will have yes, more receiving whatever. yards than AJ, AJ Brown. Oh, man, that's a great one. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Uh, Devontae Smith's my favorite player on the Eagles. <laughs> I, I love that guy. You know, I, I expect him to have – I think he's going to be the biggest beneficiary of having Kellen Moore there. So I, I, I'll go with you and say yes. And, and it's not a slap at A.J. Brown. I think A.J. Brown is great. I have no I have no issues with A.J. Brown. I just, I just think Devontae Smith is just – He's ready, man. He's ready to take that next step. Me too, man. I have no problem with A.J. Owens. Not a problem a. with A.J. Owens. <laughs> A.J. Owens, you mean Hall of Famer A.J. Owens? I like it. Number seven, Big Sills, bold prediction. Nick Sirianni will be fired by week 14 and replaced by the interim head coach, Kellen Moore. I'm going to have to disagree on this one. I think it may be by week five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, hey, I gave him too much of a, I gave him too much of a runway for you. Right. Yeah. No, I don't know. I I, I don't know. Um, geez. You know, 
in, in all honesty, I do think Kellen Moore is in place for that position, though. I, I, I agree with you there. I think Kellen Moore is set up to take over. I I I think that it, it it just really depends how this team starts. I think if this team doesn't start good, I I think Sirianni's in big trouble. And I think he's in big trouble early. And you know, I got to tell you, like just I don't know, watching the press conference at the combine and stuff, I he just looks like I don't know. He looked like something was bothering him. You know, he just what maybe his up. job? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, exactly. So I think um it you know, if 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 I concede to that, that means the Eagles are having a bad year. And I would like to think that we're not going to. So I'm gonna say he survives because everybody I think thinks that he he's going to fail. I think most people think that it's just a matter of time. So I think he's gonna find a way and he's gonna survive. How about that? You. I'm Number trying. Eight. Big Seals Bowl predictions, Eagles 2024. Cam Jurgens makes the Pro Bowl. I like it. Yeah, I could see that happening. I, I, a lot of eyes are going to be on that position because Kelsey's not there, so he'll get a lot more attention. Um, and a lot of people talk about it every week. How, how's Cam Jurgens doing in replace of Kelsey? And so, yeah, I think that happens. I like it. Number nine, Nolan Smith officially. Lands on the island of misfit draft picks by Howie Roseman and is officially dubbed a flop. <laughs> Look at you, man. The thing is, is I, I didn't see enough of him. You know, I didn't see enough from him to feel confident um, in him. I, I, I really, I'll say that I'm really in the middle of the road with that one because I, I, I need to see more. He didn't play enough, um, and I just think I got to see more. Number 10, Nicobe Dean will finish the season on IR. I I think you might be right. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to give up on him, but, I mean, he's been hurt the last two years, so um, that's something that I could definitely see happening. I hope I hope we're wrong. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got to play. Number 11, Dallas Goddard gets his first 1K season under the wow. new offense of Kellen Moore. So that would be three 1,000-yard receivers. I didn't say A.J. was getting 1,000. Oh, uh, well, I'm saying A.J. is, AJ would ha is going to get 1,000. Devontae is getting 1,000. Yeah, I like it. Three, three 1,000 yard guys. I like it. Because that's the way that I think that Jalen gets the 30 touchdowns. So you think you think um, AJ Brown's taking a step back this year? And those uh, guys I think are, they're going to take a step back over there on that side. Yes, because they're going to want to spread the ball around more. Okay. I mean, okay. you threw to the numbers more than any team in the league last year. You had an eight quarterback rating in the middle of the field. Wide receiver three had 36 completions, right. and your tight end position outside of Goddard really didn't get didn't give you any production whatsoever. Yeah. I think that I, it became predictable that way. So to me, they're gonna want to spread that rock around a little more, Philly. So I think those yeah. numbers roll back a little bit. Now he may still get over a grand, but I he you can't throw to one guy and be in a in a seven game lose seven out of eight ball games and say well you know hey he's a really great player and I'm really glad he's on our team when he had no bearing on anything when it came to winning at the end of the year where was he in the last right. nine games of the year well I mean where was the whole team you know the, the, it's not just AJ Brown though that that's the thing it, the whole team was gone I don't I don't know how you almost evaluate these guys when it was the whole team I mean I think the first series in that playoff game versus Tampa the defense missed like 14 tackles the first two series. I mean, the whole team was like that, Sills. It wasn't just A.J. Brown. I think I the reason I think he gets 1,000 yards is because he's so good after the catch. The, the, his yak is always high, so I'm going to say he still gets 1,000 yards. But to me, it wasn't – I mean, A.J. Brown was, was no different. The only guy that really, to me, showed anything during that stretch was Devontae Smith. Otherwise, I mean, the whole team was like that. It wasn't just Brown. 
Vic Fangio's pass defense lands in the top 15. I I agree. I agree. I think I think they're going I think they're going to make a big effort in that secondary. I think you're going to see corners. I think you're going to see, you know, obviously, I mean, you see the amount of safeties. We should be able to get at least one good safety. I'm going to say that, yeah, much improved. And finally, Kellen Moore will be replaced at the end of the season after Black Monday. <laughs> and named on Tuesday, the next head football coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, William Belichick. What? Bill <laughs> Belichick? Yeah, I don't see that happening at all. No. Bill Belichick coming to the Eagles? That that would be really crazy. I, I really wonder how that would work, though, with Belichick and, and Howie Roseman. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't see that one. That's That's really, out of all of them, that's the big one. That's way out there. Well, wait a minute. I think, if they shit the bed, how he survives? Yeah. Hey, when you have pictures of the owner in Mexico <laughs> brothel or wherever he was, I don't know what how he has on him. But listen, of all the years, I mean, how he's been with the team since like the what early 2000s, two thousand. He he is. It's twenty five years. Made a lot of mistakes that the owner does not hold him responsible for. I I don't see. Anything that implies any responsibility for Howie or what happened this off season or during the season, like you know, we haven't heard anything about what the front office is going to do differently, how they're going to change things. Like, I don't think Howie's held accountable like like other guys. So Howie's not going anywhere. I think Kellen Moore would be your replacement. Okay, I have one last question for you. If you have all this money invested in your offensive line and you had a quarterback you paid because he was a great RPO guy, why in the world wouldn't you want to establish yourself as a running football team more than a passing team? Shouldn't they go and stop? Look, I would sacrifice the 2,000-yard receivers, keep Devontae, and build more around my running game because that's who you are. Why are they trying to do things? And when they, the further they get away from running the ball, where they look at this, Philly, fifteen million dollar tackle left, fifteen million dollar right tackle. You're gonna pay Landon twenty. You had a ten million dollar center. You had a running back who got a thousand yards, and you had a quarterback the year before had eight hundred yards rushing, and you gave him fifty million dollars. Why in the world are you trying to deny who you are? This is the the mystery that I I don't understand as well. I mean, I look at a guy like DeAndre Swift. I thought he was underutilized. I think that the Eagles could have stopped the bleeding and all the losing if they just went and started running the ball those last you know what five six games of the year. It could have all ended, but it's like they just don't want to win. They want to win a certain way, and it, it does get annoying, you know. But I think. I think this could be where there's going to see, we're going to see some change. Not that the Eagles are going to go to a, a, a primarily a, a big running game, but I do think, I do for whatever reason, I think the Eagles are going to look to get one of these big running backs. Like, because uh, I think they look at it, and I think that's why we're hearing that the Eagles are interested in Saquon Barkley because I think they look at him and they say, "Here's a guy that." Is very talented, never played on a good team. We think he makes the impact Christian McCaffrey made with the 49ers. And I, I think I think we're going to see some changes with this team. I think the way they view running backs and the way they view the linebackers, I believe they're going to tweak it. So Here, here's I my take on Barkley. Here's my take on Barkley. I think he's overhyped. I think he's overrated. I think he's been I get now again, you're right. Shitty team, shitty O line last year, but He's never lived up to that number two billing. He's always been hurt. You're, you're going to overpay for him. The kid in Vegas is better, Jacobs. I mean, I don't oh, know, I like man. Jacobs I mean, too. I keep hearing well, I like people, Jacobs, too. I, I, I keep hearing people thing. go Barkley. What in well, the world I, has Barkley done in the last three years? Barkley, Barkley has played with the worst offensive line probably in football. It, it's he's true. had no receivers, no quarterbacks. He's been 
basically told to carry the team. Then he's had injuries, which I agree with you have been a problem. But I I look at Barkley and I say, man, if you put this guy – because I believe Barkley can catch out of the backfield, he can block, and he can run. And I believe that if you put talent around him and you put him on a talented team, I think he's a top three running back. Now, maybe you think he's already – I don't. I think he's that talented. You think he's lived lived up up. to that number two draft pick? Not at all. And it was a stupid pick. Why would you take running back there? You know, you, you take a running back in that situation when you're on the verge of winning and all you need is a running back. You don't take them and then try to build around them. They didn't even build around them, Sills. I, I think Saquon Barkley makes the same impact as a Christian McCaffrey. Now, here's the thing. The question about the running back is how devalued is it of a position? Because I think what Howie Roseman is looking at going, look at all these running backs. And um, at some point, the position's so devalued that Howie's going to look at it and say, well, this is a bargain. If I could get Saquon Barkley for $10 million a year, $9 million a year, I'm going to do it. So I think if if the price is right, he's going to do it. Now, if it was me personally and I had a choice, I would get Swift and Derrick Henry and bring them both in. That would be my number one that, thing. That's do. the dream. Yeah, that's what I would perf- preferably like. But we're hearing things about Saquon Barkley. And I do think Barkley on a good team can can be good. I, I think the Hey, Barkley and Swift friends. make sense too. Yeah, yeah, they do. But I, I, I think that the Eagles want a back that can catch out of the backfield. And I think they look at Barkley as a guy that can be the primary back. You know what? Um, though, I don't Philly, think they think Swift. Like I that, think though. they want a back that can block. That can yeah. pass protect. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Oh, because th- th- they have one of the worst groups back there. Look at that I entire mean, I mean, room. Here, here's how I see it. Whether it's Barkley or or or, or, or Jacobs or, or or you know a Swift Henry combination. If you add a running back to this team and you actually use them correctly, and you use your pieces correctly. You tell me where the weakness is on offense. If your offense is as good as I think they could be with a back like one of those, and you actually use them, um, you're going you're gonna to score 30 points a game. Now, I have a lot of holes on defense. I can't fill all the holes on defense in one year. But if I have an offense that good that is making up and hiding a lot of my deficiencies on defense – and I can draft young guys and start plugging them in and playing. It will give my defense a chance to develop while my offense carries me. I it's think absolutely that's a quickest. great take because I, what you're saying yeah. there is if you get a high-powered back in there, you're you're using time of possession and field position right. to hide a shitty defense. And yeah. if you have the ball the majority of the time, then you go on those 14-play drives, right. you hide a deficient defense with that. <clears throat> Right, and I and I can then use my young guys I draft and play them, and actually you let them develop, and then by the time you know my defense catches up a year, two years down the road, I'm probably going to lose AJ Brown. I'm probably going to have some, you know, some holes develop on offense, but I've got a defense that have that has developed over the last few years. I think that if you want to look at the Eagles and the best way for them to compete for a Super Bowl, make your offense even better. Make it even better so teams can't stop you from scoring. And then build your defense through the draft and with young guys. I think that's the best way to go. And I think if the Eagles do that, I actually think that they they could compete again for a Super Bowl this year. I want to sneak one in on you. What did you make of the Avante Maddox um, releasing? I I wasn't surprised that they cut him. I was just surprised that by when they cut him. Because uh, you would have saved an extra five million to to cut him uh, post June first or designate him that. So that was the only thing I was surprised about. But I wasn't surprised that they cut him, and I, I wouldn't be surprised they bring him back for a lesser deal. This I, Isaiah Rogers kid's supposed to be, you know, supposed to be pretty good slot corner. So um, I'm not surprised. Philly, great stuff. We covered it, man. That was Thanks, great. By man. the way. Massive, massive fan of yours. A lot of great stuff. People are constantly telling me how great you're doing. Tell folks how they can find you and your great show. Just type in Philly 500 and I'll come up. It's that easy. That easy. With me, all you have to do is Google Gabagool and there I pop up. 
I don't know. You have to Philly 500, he pops up. Gabagool, yeah, yeah. I pop up. How you doing? Yeah, because there's never any Gabagool left for me. You know? <laughs> so, and nobody's going to see any. Look you know. at that. You were the opening act for Angelo Cataldi's coming out oh, at the bottom of the hour. Look at How that. you doing, uh, right? Angelo the Great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. He's Absolutely. Great. Thank you, Philly. Thank you, my man. Take you care. You got it. The Great Philly 500. Back by popular demand. We love having him on, man. Make sure you check him out. Hit the like button. Keep it here on National Football Show. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Philadelphia fans. We're cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big Sales National Football Show. Angelo Cataldi will join us at the bottom of the hour. We will get him. Oh, by the way, got to get the Bible. That was handed to me. So we'll do that. He'll be with us at the bottom of the hour. Hey, can we please do one thing? Stay away from old and expensive guys in free agency. I don't want to hear one guy's name over 30, except Derrick Henry. Anyone else I have no interest in. I have no interest in a 30-year-old expensive guy who's going to break down. Okay? I have no interest in that. Who's that one guy you guys signed? from the Washington Commanders back in the day, and you brought him over, and he was a complete turd at defensive end. Who was that dude that you guys – I forget. What was that guy? Um, he was good in Washington. I, 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 Who was that guy? Tyron Smith? Yeah, Kerrigan. That guy blew in Philly. The guy Kerrigan blew in Philly. It was terrible. Those things barely work when you do that. Okay? Jonathan, are you an Eagles fan? No. I am a fan of the Eagle fans. Because those are the people that come here every day. I cover your team. 
And it would be disingenuous of me to say, because I cover your team for the last three years, that I'm a fan. Well, you want me to lie? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a fan of the NFL. I'm a fan of football. Okay? I do love the fans, though. I, I, I won't lie. I do love the fans. Um, I don't – hey, and I think the organization is one of the better organizations. Okay? <clears throat> I think you do a lot of good things. I don't think you draft very well. Okay? So, please do me a favor. Don't – if you're the Eagles, don't bring any more 31-year-old guys. I don't want to see any more Kevin Byards in. I don't want to see any of that shit. I don't, I don't want to see broken down pieces and bodies. Okay, Shaq Leonard. And I don't, I don't see any of these broken down guys. Bring me football players. Bring me guys that will play on your football team for a while. Here's something that's going around now. And it's really showing you. And I, I got to get this here. Listen to what's being floated around now to all the media outlets. You ready? The market will not be strong. This coming league year for positions at linebacker, running back, or safeties. You're going to see a bunch of one-year contracts. Does that play into how how he does business? Shit, that sounds like it comes right out of the Novacare Center. I'll say it again. Media outlets are reporting this, that this is not going to be a strong market when it comes to linebackers being paid big-time money, running backs, and safeties. You want to hear what they just did, the NFL? In the last two months, the National Football League has cut over a hundred million dollars in safety salaries alone. They're devaluing that position as they are the running back position. They're devaluing it. So could you get Derrick Henry for seven million? Would you pay that? I'll tell you what, you got me, you got my attention at that. 10 million? 30, even though he was really good a year ago, I don't know. He'd be a hell of a red zone back, and he could pick up the blitzes. You could extend his career a couple more years. I would totally love that. I would spend $7 million on Derrick Henry. Hey, Derrick Henry and Kenny Gainwell, that's not awful. Kenny Gainwell? And DeAndre Swift is not good enough. Kenny Gainwell and Barkley makes sense. Kenny Gainwell and Boston Scott is horrible. It makes no sense. You're going to have to pay to get back into the conversation as Super Bowl contenders. Okay? Okay. So the agents and general managers are now floating it out there trying to set the market that if you're a linebacker, a safety, or a running back, it's not going to be a high market. Why would people set it before next week and early next week? Very simple. Teams are trying to get people on the cheap. If you're Saquon Barkley, your injury history and your lack of production a year ago is going to be used against you. And you know when you guys bring up, well, he played on a horrible old line. That doesn't matter in negotiations. Derrick Henry played on one of the worst offensive lines in the league last year. He still got almost 1,400 yards. Well, he's a different player. Well, then I'm paying him versus you, who are often injured. The running back that's on the market right now for me that makes the total sense is Derrick Henry. You know why? I only want Derrick Henry for two years. 
After two years, I'll decide what I do then. Because then I got to figure out what I'm doing, what hurts. And if I could get Derrick Henry at a discount, $7 million, for a 1,500-yard back and a guy who can block, and, a, and he automatically becomes your red zone guy, I'm in. Donald goes, what about Joe Mixon? Isn't Joe Mixon DeAndre Swift 2.0? Isn't he? Isn't he DeAndre Swift 2.0? Barker refused a three a 13 a year, three year guarantee. He fired his agent over it. He'll never see those numbers ever again. A colossal disastrous negotiations last year with the Giants. $13 million a year over three years, and he passed on that. He'll never get that again or that opportunity to negotiate that. Okay? Never get that in an opportunity. Dan is a fan of the fans. That's some psycho drive. If I ever heard it, the dude trolls on daily. Anthony, I have no idea what that cockeyed sentence means. Hey, Anthony, if you think I need your approval, you are way off base. I could care less what you think of me. Troll? That's some sort of like new weirdo rule. I don't troll anybody. I don't give a shit about that stuff. You think troll, troll is code for truth as far as i'm concerned that's my new take for truth troll it's truth hey dan trolls the truth okay yeah i do thank you congratulations to you i troll the truth sure angelo cataldi will join us at the bottom of the hour can't say I've seen a lot of Xavier McKinney. He's a good football player. He'd like to still work something out with the Giants from what I'm understanding. Talking to a good friend of mine this morning who is a diehard Giants fan. He says he's good but struggles in coverage. Gets turned around a little bit in coverage is what you mean. Don't want to spend for that. Um, the Giants really didn't have a very good team last year. Okay? D they didn't really have a very good team last year. So, and their defense wasn't really all that. And Joe asked about Eckler. Eckler's a great player, too. He's, But he's DeAndre Swift. He's Joe Mixon. They're the, kind of the same guys, Joe. Okay? I don't care if I'm wrong or right, Sills. Eagle fans can't handle the truth. Most people can't. Okay? <laughs> Literally everyone and their neighbor is a free agent this year. Boy, our teams, because they overspent the last couple of years. And here's something crazy. To LJ's point, how in the world can teams be over the cap when the cap went up because of COVID to 255-1? It makes no sense. Big Sills, thank you for having me on. Is there a price that you would pay for Barkley? Eight to nine million a year. But Philly, if I'm going to pay eight to nine, I'm going to pay that for Henry. Henry's been more productive. And Philly, I would do, look, who would you rather have over the next two years? Philly 500, who would you rather have over the next two years? Derrick Henry or Saquon Barkley? Who would you rather have? Who would you guys rather have? Henry or Barkley? Barkley's not better than Henry. It's not close. Here, what did what did what did Derrick Henry have on the worst offensive line in pro football last year? Let's just take a look at what he had. I don't even know really. Did he have a thousand yards? I I thought he was. Derrick Henry, two thousand twenty three stats. Um, I don't even know what he did. The quarterback stunk. The whole thing stunk last year. And he gained 11.67 with 12 touchdowns. And he played 17 ball games. 
So here's what Derrick Henry has done over the last five years. 1540, 2027, 1037, 1538, and almost 1,200 yards rushing with 12 touchdowns, 13, 10, 17, and 16. And you want Barkley? Why? And he's 30. Okay? And he's 30. Um, so it's based on production and a player than Henry. But age-wise, Barkley. Yeah, but how about this? His age doesn't help him when you put the injury factor more so than that. I mean, hey, look. And if I bring Derrick Henry in, I'm not looking to give him the ball 300 times a game or 300 times a year. Think about this, Philly. Everyone, I'm not looking for Derrick Henry to carry the mail. I'm looking for Derrick Henry to improve his yards per carry to 5.0 on 190 carries or 200 carries. If he fl- if I get 900 yards from Derrick Henry on 180 carries, and he's at five yards a carry, and he gets you 10 touchdowns. Isn't that worth it? And he pass protects. And he catches uh, passes out of the backfield. And he's playing behind that Eagle O-line. Right? My first choice is to bring Swift and Henry in. You said that together, but if I can't, get him. Barkley would be my second choice. I'm just concerned about the injury. If Barkley can be Penn State Barkley, sign me. Sign me up. But if I'm choosing between him and Henry, I'm choosing Henry. Remember something too, Gregorio, what you're doing here is you're not looking past two years. Shit, you may not even be looking past one. You may sign him to a year and an option. Okay, you you may be in a position to sign him up for one with a team friendly option in the second year. Spin, I'm not looking for 1,800 yards out of Derrick Henry. I'm looking for five and a half yards of carry because every time he and Hertz are in the backfield together as a coordinator, you have to account for that. I didn't account for the Eagle run game after week 11. I didn't have to because they couldn't run. You couldn't outrush anybody. Those guys were not running the ball well. You you were outrushed by the Giants late in the year. So me, if I'm sitting there and I'm game planning and I'm playing linebacker and I'm Mike linebacker against the Eagle offense and you got Derrick Henry in the backfield and Jalen Hurts, and you got Goddard and those wideouts, I'll tell you what, man, you've got me concerned about stopping the run first, which means what? Your linebackers, because when when you watch teams play against the Eagles last year, you know what they did? Linebackers started moving back off the ball and covered the middle of the field. That's why you had no success over the middle of the field last year. They weren't worried about your run game because Hurts wasn't running. You put Derrick Henry back there, that linebacking core has to scoot back up to the line of scrimmage again. And you have to defend that. You can't just back up and get Derrick Henry. A... So wait a minute. You're, you're going to give Derrick Henry a running start with that old line behind Jordan Mulata or Lane Johnson and Landon Dickerson? That's not something as a linebacker or defensive tackle I want to be in line for. Giving Derrick Henry a running start at my linebackers or safeties. You you feel me? So you got to squeeze up to the line of scrimmage because you can't let that guy get that running start on you. That's how you game plan. Okay? That's how you game plan. Henry and Wright is a good combo running back for this year and beyond. Barkley rushed for 30 yards against Rutgers. <laughs> Dude, I never really – I thought Saquon Barkley's a good football player. 
Seals, how about Blake Corum in the third? I think he's kind of small. I mean, has that program ever produced a running back in the history of Michigan football? Can you name one? Has Michigan ever produced a running back in like its program's history? Rob Lytle? Guy that played in Denver? I mean, have they ever had a running back? Bianca Batuka wasn't awful. Okay? Wasn't awful. Don't forget, Angelo Cataldi will join us at the bottom of the hour. Okay? I mean, Tyrone Wheatley, he was okay. You know, nothing special. Tyron Wheatley was a good player, but I mean, yeah, all right. Not nothing, anything great though, but that's why this Blake Corn kid, tough guy, good college running back. Like, hey, Xander, who was the Alabama running back that won the um, Heisman Trophy? Who was uh, not, not Najee Harris, the other kid that played in um, New Orleans and up in uh, Baltimore? Who was that kid? that won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, Mark Ingram. He's kind of like that. Okay? I mean, whatever you thought of Mark Ingram, Mark Ingram had 1,000 yards. He wasn't awful. He was a good football player. I mean, but, I mean, Mark Ingram, I think Najee's better. And I also, Henry's obviously a Hall of Fame talent. Um, No, Mark Ingram is not as good as Reggie Bush. But Reggie was a little overrated. Okay? Reggie was a little overrated. He didn't really do the things that I th- I thought he was going to be the next Gail Sayer, somebody like that, or would play a little bit like Barry Sanders, but he wasn't as electric as he was in college. Uh, yeah, Reggie Bush is one of the most electric football players in the history of college football. Okay? Would you, would, would you rather have Purdy or Josh Allen? I, it's not close. As a matter of fact, bang, bang, Niner gang. I wouldn't shock me if Kirk Cousins signs with the 49ers. It would not. I'll tell you what, man. It's it. The Eagles are more interesting now. They're, they're more interesting now. And they finally had a feel-good story this week with with Jason Kelsey. And I, I'm I'm going to ask Angelo Cataldi this question because he's seen them all. You know, Bednarik was a representation of that city because back as I told you guys, Bednarik was a representation of the league along with other Mike linebackers, Niski in Green Bay, Huff in New York, Buckus in Chicago and Bednarik and Philly. They were the faces of the National Football League. It wasn't the quarterback. Because you know what? They were the faces of blue-collar workers. Today, it's different. Now you have Kelsey, Dawkins, or Reggie White in the last 30 years. Who really wears the face of Philly if you really were to put it on one of those three men? Let's bring in our friend, by the way. Don't forget the Bible. Loud. Here it is. And our dear friend with a Beautiful tan from St. Thomas. <laughs> he is Angelo Cataldi. I was say, I was hoping that maybe you saw Jeffrey Lurie down there looking for yachts. When yeah, you were down there in St. Thomas. I saw a whole bunch of yachts when I was down there, Dan. But they were none of them were big enough for Lurie. He's a billionaire. He probably gets like a hundred foot one or something. Now, no, it was a, it was a great trip down there. It was really nice. It was eighty plus degrees for five days. And um, I was poolside on uh, Tuesday or Monday when uh, Jason Kelsey held the news conference. And my wife and I were watching it on our cell phones. Can you imagine this in St. Thomas? And uh, it was uh, it was extraordinary. It was it was so perfect. You know, his 13 years. I'm so glad you mentioned Bednarik because I came here after Bednarik's plank days were long past. But I got to meet him a couple of times. And he would hold, he'd have this big meaty hook he'd hang out to you. And he had two of his fingers were, were 
aiming in different directions. He had busted him on a football field and just kept playing. You know, he played on both sides of the ball. And he was, he was the embodiment of the Philadelphia athlete until Jason Kelsey. I think for the Eagles, it goes right from Bednarik to Kelsey. The, all the people in between, there are a lot of heroes, a lot of stars, but nobody embodied the blue-collar, gritty, I'll play no matter what attitude that Bednarik had and that Kelsey did. And his final chapter, his last speech, magic, absolute magic. I I feel like you know, I'm supposed to be a writer and I'm listening to him. When he, I got to read something to you. Let me read a little bit from this. Because this is writing better than I could ever do. And I was trained to be a writer. And he's talking about all these, these fly-by-night athletes that come into town and bitch about the fans. And this is what he said. He said, these fans have been caring for generations in this town about this team. And they aren't about to accept a bunch of excuses and soft-ass nonsense representing the name on the front of the jersey something they've invested their lives in. If you don't like what the fans and media are saying as a player, it's very easy. Love them. Treat them like your brothers and go out and play your balls off. Wear your heart on your sleeve. And I guarantee you change those narratives. Wow. I, I, Mind-boggling how great that is. And it's right. It's so right. That guy, Dan, I wrote on my blog yesterday. I said, He's now my all-time favorite athlete in any sport, any time, any place. He's number one now because he did it all so beautifully from his resiliency and his reliability to his leadership to, to, to the, the speech at the rally, to the final speech, his ability to communicate with the fans, to connect with them, to channel their, their passion. Wow, what a guy, man. I hope the people understand just how great that player was because there's none like him. We'll probably never see anyone like him again. Have you ever seen anybody more relatable in Eagle history or in Philadelphia sports history? The thing that blows my mind the most about that is that he's not from Philadelphia. You know, like Hassan Reddick is. He understands Philly. He grew up around here. This guy's from Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Philadelphia, yeah. Cleveland, you could, it's like the moon yeah. and the sun. Yeah. I, I don't, all I know is from when he first got here, there was a little distancing the first year or so. I remember ripping him a couple of times and, you know, the, but then he settled in and he, he felt the vibe of the city and, and he just, he opened his life up. If you saw the documentary he did on Amazon, um, he opened his life up. He understood the responsibility of a celebrity, that part of the job description is to share your life with the people. To You chose that line of work. So it's not an imposition when the media is asking you to talk to them. It's giving you an opportunity to connect with the people that matter the most. He got it. He understood it. He made the most of it. God bless him. And I, wherever he ends up, Dan, he's not done. He's still going to do a lot of things that we love in our city because there's nobody like him. He's number one for me. You know, Angelo, I, what I took away from it was in a city like Philly, when you break down like that, you have exception for the exceptional. Yeah. And you – are going to see that in a different way versus some guy who was an overpaid guy moaning and crying about, Hey, you know, this or that. But when you, like you said, when you watch that guy and know what he's done for 13 years and he leaving pieces of his body all across the country and you watching him, how hard it is. I wasn't a, it wasn't tears of sadness. It was tears of thankfulness. Yeah. And it just being in the, like you said, Sometimes you're parachuted into an awful situation in an awful city and an awful organization. I don't think he could have been parachuted in any other place that would have worked for him because mm. it embodied exactly what you said. He's a walk-on at Cincinnati. He was a line walk-on linebacker. People were telling him, Coach Mudd was telling him, 
Yeah. Yeah, I kid, you're not going to make it really. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Stoutland gets a hold of him. I mean, it was really an iconic. It was like a soliloquy. It, it really was, Angelo. Not to get yeah. too deep on that, but it really come off like that to me. The thing is, Dan, about just before this season started, um, I did a, a charity thing with uh, Jason and his wife. We did a there was an auction, and um, they auctioned off a big dinner, and they had like ten people come there, and uh, Jason was in the middle of this long table, and they brought out special wines, and they had like four or five courses, and if you watch the guy you realize that he wasn't putting it on. Like he wasn't going, this is part of my obligation, so I'll do it. He put himself into it. He was, he shared stories. He was, he, he was interesting and funny and, and at no point. And then at the end, everybody wanted their own pictures with him. And he was so patient and, and funny with them. And, and it was just, it's like he belonged here. You know, it's like, this is the perfect place for him. It's like you just said, like, you couldn't ask for a better combination of his personality and the city of Philadelphia. And he made the most of it. Yeah. You know? And the one other thing, when, when people are talking about him, you know, look, we deal with a lot of guys. I'm looking at what's going on right now with Ben Simmons, right? Ben Simmons uh, is out for the season again. Of course. And, and Ben Simmons never enjoyed playing basketball. He never liked it. He liked the uh, money and he liked the perks of it, but he didn't want to be a celebrity. He didn't want to answer questions. He didn't want to do anything, right? Uh, this guy does all of it and he does it with a smile. And the part that I'm going to remember most about is how much he loved playing. Oh, did he love going on that field? Did he love putting that helmet on and slamming his undersized body against a 350-pound nose tackle? And he did it. You know, my wife said something to me. She was really into this whole story. She went, what's going to happen now to the tush push? You know, was it because – were they so great at it? Because Kelsey was so quick off – right up, he, he centered it. Boom. He was well, right I think it's the, gone. Is it going to work that way no. with Cam Jurgis? I doubt it. You know, I don't think so. Dan, I just, you know, I don't no, – normally when I come on your show, I'm ripping somebody. <laughs> but this here, this guy, this is an honor to be talking about him yep. this week. It's an honor. It really is. Absolutely. You know, it's almost like a Cal Ripken kind of guy, how Cal fit into Baltimore and how Gwen fit into San Diego or yep. Kelsey fit in. Uh, Ryan Sandberg fit in Chicago. That's right. kind of what that reminds me of, right, Angelo? Is that exactly. some guys personify the cities they play in? Exactly. And and your comparison with Ben Narek was so perfect because most people are not around now that got to see him, so they don't know how much he sacrificed to be this great player and win his championship. And I guess he won a couple of them, but he won in sixty. I know that. Yeah. And and, and the thing about him. Those kind of guys, there aren't that many now. There aren't many left now that aren't tainted by all the money or uh, advice from agents. You know, now, Kelsey would, if he had an arm hanging off his shoulder socket, he'd go out there and take the snap. He just wasn't going to miss a game. And I guarantee you, man, having to walk away, even though he's had such a physical toll on his body, that had to be the hardest decision of his life because he loves it so much. He loves. Let me it. ask you this: yeah. Do you think there's going to be a time during the year, midway point, say they have some injuries? Yeah. yeah. His passion and his love, because mm -hmm. Angelo, the last thing yeah. to go yeah. is your love for the sport. Yeah. Your body goes first. Is there going to be an angst to want to maybe go? Yeah. Hey, give me a call. Here's the thing. That's a great question. All right, Dan. Uh, thing is, if the team is going to be good, yeah. And I know he said the hardest part is they're going to ball next year. <laughs> they're not going to ball next year, right? They're, they're, they're in the downswing now, serious downswing. Uh, but if they were in, you know, they had important games to play and it was half a season to go and 
that he was watching it and chomping at the bit. I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I wouldn't recommend it either. I, don't toy with that legacy. You have, you did so much greatness. If you come back after you've been out all that time, are you going to be Jason Kelsey or are you going to be a cheap facsimile? You know, I would hope that he wouldn't do it, but if he did, I would understand it. And I'm sure the people would embrace it because more Jason Kelsey is, is more watching an, an extraordinary player. Do you believe with the loss of Kelsey and potentially of Brandon Graham? And I know that there's talks potentially of Graham coming back and Fletcher. Do you think there's going to be a void of leadership uh-huh. in that locker room after what went down with the coach and everything last year in the back end of that season? Do you think there's an issue with leadership? You know, watching Kelsey this week, Dan, made me realize how ludicrous the decision was to bring Nick Sirianni back because you already had a core leadership group of veterans that was second to none in the NFL. You had Graham and Cox on defense. You had Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey on offense. Kelsey, maybe the biggest, best leader in the NFL, and they still fell apart. Those guys couldn't fix it. They couldn't do anything to stop the bleeding because the coach, the coach and the people that were making the play calls and doing all the inside work blundered so horrifically that it was like Kelsey proof. He couldn't do anything to fix it. So, yeah, there'll be a vo- there's a void anyway with, with Sirianni as the coach. Sirianni, they I already know what's going to happen. They're going to have a, a bad year. They're going to win five games, maybe less, all right? And then what's going to happen is the fall guy will be Sirianni, and they will have lost a year here of reestablishing a whole new leadership group, reestablishing a coaching staff and all that. This is just going to be a wasted year because they couldn't do what was obvious that they had to do, and that was get rid of Sirianni. So there will be a leadership void. You're right. Graham probably will come back. They'll have Graham on defense, and they'll have Lane Johnson on offense, and it won't be nearly enough because they're not going to have a good enough team, and they damn well don't have a good enough coach. You know, Angelo, this will be my only criticism of Jason and Fletcher Cox and of Brandon Graham. You know – For me, these guys are all endorsing Nick and saying how much they love him in the offseason, how much they care about him, how much they love playing for him. Well, if you loved your coach so much, why did you fall apart at the end of the season and not play harder for him when it mattered? It just seems, Angelo, that it falls on deaf ears with me when I'm sitting there. You know, I'm hearing you talk, and it seems to be a pattern over there at Novacare. You're telling me stuff after the fact that yeah. it doesn't matter right now. So it kind of falls on hollow ears with me here and shallow ears with me. Cause I'm not, I'm not buying that you guys really loved the guy. Cause if he did, he'd have played hard. Am I off base? Well, Kelsey couldn't have played harder. He played every play and he just did everything he could. So it doesn't really apply to him. His teammates did not play nearly hard enough, especially as things went bad in the second half of the season. And he had no, he clearly couldn't fix that. He couldn't do anything about it. My argument there would be enough players saw how inept the coaching was and simply couldn't respond to it by the time they got to the last four or five games of the season and things were going bad. I don't, you know, it gets to a point where you go, it doesn't matter what Jason Kelsey said. They still have Boston Scott on the bench inside the 20 yard line where he's the best weapon inside the 20. In the last five years in the NFL, he's a red zone monster, and they won't use him in that role. And they won't give the ball to A.J. Brown nearly enough. And they won't pick up the blitz, even though it's killing them week after week. There's no there's no leadership that can fix that, Dan. That, that, that's, that's such deep ineptitude that if you're a player and you're giving everything you have and it's going nowhere – at some point, you stop believing. And that's, I think, what happened in the season. It's insane that they brought Nick Sirianni back and they'll pay the price in the next year. They could have as much as $50 million in 
money to be able to spend in free agency. Angelo, you know the the MO of these guys, especially Howie Roseman, and Howie gets pissed at me because I call him a librarian. You know, I mean, this guy's I think hey, believe me, you should. I had Carton on the other day too, and he's like, You're shaking the room up here. They won't let's get this. Uh, now it's official. Nobody from NBC Philly can come on the show. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Nobody from NBC Philadelphia because somebody contacted them. Another badge of honor. <laughs> Any Dan, every time they start boycotting you, you got to say to yourself, now I know I'm doing it right. Now <laughs> I know I'm getting the attention of people who are afraid of the truth. That's all it is. They're afraid of the truth. You're standing there telling the truth every day. And they're going, we got to do something to stop this guy. What are we going to do? We need some more of these butt munchers to come in. And say how great <laughs> I don't are. know how they get so butt hurt with me saying you can't draft a corner. Well, he, <laughs> he can. That's pretty clear. The thing is, these comments that I make, that you make, that were so obvious, right? Yes. They get upset about that. Why? It's obvious. You're not watching the same games we are. Come on. <laughs> Deal with it. What are you doing? I don't. I, I, I just don't get it. Do you think they'll be spenders in this oh, go they, around? Do you think they're going to spend money? They are. They the, the, the decision to keep Sirianni was a decision that what we saw the last half of the season was an aberration. And it was Howie saying, no, I had a good roster. Some went horribly wrong, but I'll I'll bring people back. I'll fill the holes here. Look, I don't, I'm not ready to, to call him a librarian. I think he's He's built some pretty strong rosters the last four or five years. He's had a good team, and he's made a lot of good free agent moves, and he he made some good trades. I think he's a he's a good GM, maybe a really good one. But he's climbing up a big mountain now because he's got a lot of guys getting old, and he's got a lot of guys who aren't very good that he's stuck with, and he's got a lot of guys who just keep getting hurt, like that Nicobe Dean. You bring in the Kobe Dean. If you give us a third round pick and you say, all right, you got the middle of the field and he can't stay on the damn field for three games without getting hurt. Those kind of players. That's why I love Kelsey. He never got when Kelsey got hurt, you didn't even know it. He didn't right. tell anybody. He just kept playing. Here, there's a lot of soft guys. There's a lot that has to go into the remake of this team. You know how it works. It's cyclical for most teams. And the cycle right now is heading in the wrong direction for the Eagles. A couple last questions for you, Angelo. Um, could you see them drafting? And I made this bold prediction. I could see the Eagles drafting a quarterback in either rounds three or four because, one, they've done it before. When they had Wentz, they drafted mm. Jalen in the second round, and he wasn't drafted to be the mm. starter. He was drafted to be a seatbelt. Mm. Um and they love to hedge their bets over there. That's one thing that they do. Yeah. Could you now maybe not a third, Angelo, but could you see them drafting a quarterback? Because that's kind of how they operate. They like to cover their ass, is what I'm saying. Well, they definitely I would be shocked if they brought Mariota back. So they'll need a backup. Um, and he's cheaper on a rookie deal. They got a kid there now that looked pretty good in the preseason. Tanner McKee. Uh, yeah, he's okay. Um I doubt it, Dan. That, the, the least of their worries is quarterback. Just block the blitzers. I, I, I keep using this stat because it's the most amazing stat I've seen in a playoff game that they've prepared for for weeks. Ten times a blitzer in Tampa. The ball was snapped, and he ran directly to the quarterback with no one touching him. Ten unmolested rushes at the quarterback. You want, name me a guy who's going to survive that. Brady isn't. Peyton Manning isn't. No one is. The quarterback is fine. Get smart coaches around to bring out what he can do. Oh, that Jalen Hurts is not the problem. He's the least of their problems. They get everywhere else. They can't cover the pass. How many times were people wide open with a pass? I mean, third and nine. No one covering the guy for 15 yards. You're, that's the you fix that problem. 
Don't worry about that. Don't put Hassan Reddick out in coverage when he's your best pass rusher. Come on. Oh. Last two questions for you. The uh, White House spokesperson, or excuse me, the Eagle spokesperson, um, Howard Eskin, uh, <laughs> is telling us that Saquon Barkley could be yeah. somebody yeah. of interest for the Eagles. So I'm assuming yeah. it, since it's coming from somebody inside yeah. the Eagles, um, yeah. you should hear what Mike Missinelli said. Wow. I, yeah. I, I know you're in his ass, but he called him a mouthpiece too. And so did Carton and all these guys. And I'm, so I'm going to take for what it is. He's got to have some insight here. What would you think of a guy? I never thought Barkley lived up to that second pick. No. He's always hurt. And I'm not going to pay $8 million for that. And I don't think they are either. And you got to understand there's two ways you use a mouthpiece. One is you float it out there and see what the reaction is. The other is it's an act of deception. You're doing it because you really have no intention of doing it. But why shouldn't I get the Giants thinking that I am? So oh. they're going to want to spend more money on Saquon Barkley. Now, right the, on. the one thing the Eagles have been pretty smart about is knowing that running back, the running back position has been devalued. The idea that you would spend all that money and do that for Barkley, who you're right, is you know, running backs have a five or six year. After that, they're not as good. I, that would be idiotic. It does It does not sound like that is something Howie Roseman would do, but it is something they would try to float out there for whatever their purposes might be. And if you're going to do that, Howard Eskin's a guy. He's a guy who will just tell Howard something. He'll run on the air with it because – he is a mouthpiece for the for the Eagles. That's clear. It's obvious. Last question for you. Um, I have to revisit this one with AJ Owens. And I have to like the way that one thing about AJ Owens, or excuse me, AJ Brown. Okay. Right. First, he's telling me, Angelo, right. he hates the media. He hates all of us. Right. We blow things out of proportion. Then he goes on and he sits down and has a fireside chat with the afternoon guys. And one of the afternoon guys gave him a standing ovation after for coming on. And I'm like, a standing ovation. And he's telling, I mean, I'm, how do you look at him? Is that just All the right. position today? I it mean, is. Yeah. It, you're, Dan. I didn't tolerate a lot of guys like that in my 33 years at WIP. But there weren't a lot of guys that could play like that guy either. I love him. I, I got it on the field. You are Jimmy Johnson. Wait a minute, Angelo. Jimmy Johnson him. says this. He goes, yeah. okay, hey, yeah. let me tell you something here. You want to be that guy? Right. And you want to be a Charles Haley where you're uh, an asshole? Okay. Here's yeah. the asshole scale. Okay? As long yeah. as that asshole scale balances, oh, yeah, good. Oh, no, you're right. And he's a year away from that. <laughs> what I want. He was ignored in games. He was so much better than any other target. They had Devontae, but he's better than Devontae. He's, he's the best receiver they've had since Mike Quick. You understand? He's better than T.O. And they weren't calling his number. They weren't giving him the ball. So, you know, as somebody who for many years was a malcontent himself, <laughs> I, can, I can maybe connect a little bit with that, Dan. And, and I'm giving him this year. Now, I agree with you. He's overplaying it a little. There are no standing ovations when I was in a studio. No matter how, you know, not that wasn't going to happen with me. But, you know, I, I guess they were really pleased. I'm sure they were real happy that he called them. He, he gave them news. He gave them something great to talk about. Yeah, but, but me and you would go like this. I don't care if he calls or yeah, not. I don't need right. that guy. <laughs> well, but, no, you don't. But um, I I want to, I want to ignore look there's a reason why he didn't he wasn't in tennessee he burned yeah. a lot of bridges there this guy is a diva no one's going to tell you he's not a diva but if you just keep feeding him the ball and get a hundred plus yards a game you're right the balance is okay for now then when he starts doing less and still acts like a jackass then you got to get rid of him i mean and like I'm, you said I'm three thousand yards in two years year. Status quo is right there for Not you. One more as year. long as that's still there, you know, we're good. Him. He's a hell of a football player. He's a great player. Hey, I'll tell you what, finally here, your your WIP guys, man. I mean, <laughs> that's a hell of a PR room. I mean, those guys really do a great job for the Eagles, man. I mean, if you if you want to get the Eagle love, man, that's 
that's the place to well, go. I, not so all. Did you ask how you feeling, Nick? Who cares? Not all of them. I, I, I yeah. I, my, I like John Ritchie. My style was more critical than what they do today. But I'm a dinosaur. I think me too. You're. I look to you now. You are the new voice to me. I mean, Dan, you are not afraid of anyone. And my God, do you know football? And I just. I'm, I, whenever you call me and I come right on because I know you do. I'm honored to be with you because you you do it the style that I did it, and you know a hell of a lot more than I did. Hold I'll, on, I want to tell you this: what your yeah. contemporaries around the country say, yeah, about you coming on, yeah, Mike Missanelli and everyone, they go, "How are you getting Angelo on so much? Yeah. He doesn't do this." No, and I go, "I'm hoping it's a Paisan thing first and foremost." Right. I go, other than that, I go, I think it's because mm -hmm. we kind of see eye to eye with one another and how we that's what it is, how we deliver our content. It's it's not look, it's not money. It's not. I do it because. Thank you. What, when you said Bednarik, I have been thinking all week how, wow, Kel, Kelsey is the first one since Bednarik who was really that way. And you came right on a set and I feel like you're a kindred spirit. You're a guy who thinks. The way I did for so many years, and I uh, want to show you this, Angelo. Yeah. Um, as you know, my uncle's Andy Robustelli. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. Okay. And Robustelli introduced me to Chuck Bednarik. He comes over, like you said, with this catcher's mitt hand. <laughs> Come here, kid. He's <laughs> shaking my hand. He goes, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> And I go like this, and I go, I go, I have a picture of you over my my bed. And he goes, Yeah, what? Of you standing over Gifford because Gifford was a giant, and I knew who, you know. Right. And he I go, What did you what did you say to Frank Gifford right there in the end of that game? He goes, I said this to him, kid, and always remember, this game is fucking over. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, just so you know. Uh, Andy Rostelli, those were the years when I lived in New England and was a Giants fan, and I was a big Andy Robustelli fan. So uh, it, I didn't even know that. I did. I I, yeah. I knew you had a big football lineage, but I didn't realize it was that tight. But uh, one other thing I want to just mention, because next Tuesday is a big day for my book. Next this Tuesday, one right here, folks. The audio book is out next Tuesday. It's over ten hours. <laughs> took me 16 to do it. And, and, <laughs> and uh, I know a lot of people don't like reading a book. You could hear me read it to you. And I really enjoy doing it. I think you'll enjoy the book. I've gotten so much positive feedback on it. Oh, I got to just tell you, Dan, this last thing. So I'm in St. Thomas, day one, last Sunday, right? And I walk out to the pool and I sit down on one of the Shays lounges. And four lounges over is an older gentleman, and he holds up his book. No way! It's my book. Holy shit! I go over to the guy. I go, I just want to tell you, sir, you have great taste in literature, <laughs> right? And the guy, and the guy goes, he looks up and he goes, <laughs> Yeah, oh. right. Are you Any place here? in the world, there you are at a pool, and your boxers there <laughs> getting ready to put your son in, and you got this, and the guy, and you look over, and the guy's like this. I can just <laughs> see the guy going. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the biggest thrills of my literary life. The, I, I, the guy was reading my freaking book. How great was that? But That's the audio book's out next Tuesday if you want it, and Dan. Call me when you need me, my friend. I love talking to you. Thank you so much, my friend. It's an honor to always have you on in our friendship. As for everyone to know, every time something goes sideways, this is what Angelo sends me back. You're working. That's all you have to know. Once you get to people, hey, you yeah. you have five merit badges as far as I'm concerned on your belt right now. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you'll know you're in trouble when I stop boycotting you. <laughs> Thank you, Angelo. You, I appreciate Danny. it, my friend. The great Angelo Cataldi. Fantastic stuff. Absolutely. All right, folks, do me a favor. We'll reset my big sills.
2024 NFL predictions. We'll do that next. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big sales! Hit the like button. Thank you, Angelo. <laughs> Why did they bring back that flop of a coach, Nick Sirianni? Yeah, please do me a favor, too. No more 30-year-old overpaid old guys. No more old guys, Howie. No more old guys. You could possibly have as much as $50 million in cap space, too. Good for you, man. Good for you. Hey, we're going to reset here in a second. We're going to give you also... My bold predictions for the NFL season 2024. We did the Eagle one earlier. You know, they're talking about the Russell Wilson deal being one of the worst deals in pro football history. How about this deal? Josh Rosen, Steve Kime, remember the old general manager for the Cardinals? A DUI love boy. They moved up to 10. And they gave the Raiders the 15th pick, the 79th pick, and the 52nd pick to move up to Josh Rosen, who's not in the league anymore. (laughs) And this is just a few years ago that they did that. Still, I'd have to think the Russell Wilson because of the money and all the first rounders. Okay? Hey, Greg, thank you so much, brother. means a lot to me, man, that you would do that. Thank you. Greg, it means a lot. This year, Howie will either get fired or extend it again. Here it comes, Big Sills. Prediction. Eagles 7-9. and 
Sounds about right. I think they're a seven-win team. Now, that could change if they make a splash. I'll tell you what, man. If, you, if you're on our network, oh, Hurts is having a bounce-back year. The Eagles are going to be back in contention for a Super Bowl. Hey, and I was like, look, Jesus, Kimini. I don't know. Maybe I'm more like Angelo than I thought. I'm not as optimistic. And the reason I'm not as optimistic is because you don't have benchmark defensive players. You have nobody on defense that's not tradable. Jalen Carter, I probably wouldn't. You would have to give me two ones for him. I'm not trading you. I, I'm not getting rid of him. I'm not getting rid of him. I think there's something special with that guy. Okay. I think there's something special. Got 50 million. That's right, Kyle. I think it's him. All right. By the way, before I get going, how many people do believe that the Eagles are going to draft a quarterback in the top three picks? How many people believe that? I'm not saying to replace Jalen. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even referencing that. Oh man, Brian, that's a good one. The kid Cunningham was, I believe, up in New England now. I like him. Big Sills, why wouldn't you sign Justin Simmons? I don't want an old guy. I'm done with it. Not interested in that. 31-year-old safety, and because he played with Vic. Dude, isn't that the football defensive team that gave up 70 points? Anybody on that Denver Bronco defense? Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't that secondary, how many points did the Dolphins score on that Bronco team? I'm just, I, I don't, was, how, was it 60? Did they put, did they put 60 points on a, on that defense back there? They put 70. You want to sign a guy who was on a defense that gave up a 70 burger. And he's 31. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Gave up a 70 burger? Dude, I've never I've never been in a football game where I was on um a field when there were 70 points scored by one team. I've never seen that. Seems like I grew up a journalist like Angelo and Mike Missinelli, critical thinking when it came to Philly sports. You are the next generation of changing our teams. Or challenging our team, excuse me. Thank you. Um, I think that personally, people are trying to, um, you know, they're trying to make big seals and guys like big seals extinct. And they want all the guys that are the spin doctors. Okay. They want to, they like spinning it. Sertan was on that team too. He was. Good call, Marshall. Yes, sir, man. He was on that team, too. Seals gives the right kind of constructive criticism. You need that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's have a little fun here with the league. Thank you, Barb. Isn't it funny? Angelo said the same thing. It's almost like Jason Kelsey and Big Seals. I'll tell you why. Let me... Make that comparison. At first, people in a particular market are going to be like this. I don't know. This guy's got loud mouth and, you know, what the hell? Well, it, <laughs> the reason you're saying that is because you are a loud mouth too. And when you don't like a loud mouth in a loud room, you know, you don't like anybody talking shit to your family. And you look at your sports teams as family, which is cool. 
It's not a rip. It's actually cool that you do that. So when some loudmouth like me comes in and starts saying, ah, this guy sucks. He's not great. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're eating off my dinner plate, kid. Okay? Make sure you take one hamburger. Don't take two. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Hey, hey, Yale, didn't they pull the starters with, like, minutes left in the game? Roast goes catering to this new generation that can't handle any criticism. That's a fair statement. Hey, dude, all I say is, is that the librarian general manager you have in Philly can't draft corners and people get butthurt over that. Well, I don't know what else to say to you. I like little nicknames, like someone else we know that's walking around America today. I like the little nicknames. Pinocchio Siriani. And we will have the Pinocchio meter. The Big Seals Pinocchio meter. This year for Siriani and how many lies he tells every week. Seals, why do you think Belichick is the next head coach? Because it's somebody that would have to take over an organization after Howie Roseman and the head coach get fired. WIP and the Fanatic has nothing on you, Seals. With you every day. Joseph, that's outstanding. Remember something, Joseph. Xander knows this. Those hosts all suck. Every one of them on those radio stations. They all are terrible. You make that station WIP what it is. You make those hosts. That's why they don't pay them anymore. It's you. Dude, you could, you could have a trained seal on the air in that market and they'll get six shares. <laughs> you, you could loop an Eagle game. Get this. I guarantee you, if you looped an Eagle game for three hours of a show, it'd pull five shares. It would, it would to get Xander. Am I right? If you went and you, you played all, 18 games of last year and you put it on the air and you put it for two hours and three hours, I guarantee it would outrate any other show that was going up against it during that respected time slot. That's just what that thing is. I'm with you on trading for a DB. It would cost a second round pick. No, man, if you're getting certain dog, you're you're it, you're you're going to give up ones, okay? You're you're giving up ones when you're in that conversation, okay? Jalen Johnson got extended, so they gave him a contract extension. He's 24 years old. That was one of the guys during the trading deadline last year. I wanted the Eagles to take a look at. They had him on the market, but Chicago wanted a lot, and it is a nice move by the Bears. Okay. They have actually repaid, replayed the Super Bowl 52 a few times on the radio. They should. Seals, with your predictions, why do you have the Eagles winning five to seven games? James, here's why. Great question. Great question. Today, on March 7th, I don't believe you have a good enough defense to stop anybody because you didn't at the end of the season this last year. And you haven't done anything yet. Now, can that change? Absolutely. Let's see what they do. Today, March 7th, you don't have a good enough team. Okay? Oh, Schneed. Okay. Okay. I'm only two days in, but loving the show. Gregorio, thank you. I think he fills in WIP every now and then. Okay. I don't I, I, I look at their uh Twitter page, but I don't really listen to that thing unless it's some sort of interview where they're celebrating a guy calling in and the bipolar receiver you have on the team calls in 
have to tell him you hate him, you love him, you hate him, you love him, you hate him, you love him. Okay? I hate him, you love him, you hate him, you love him. Sills, if Penix Jr. drops in the draft, do the Eagles take him in insurance policy for Hertz? That'd be a second rounder. Would you draft Michael Penix Jr. in the second round? That would create a lot of shit for Hertz. Okay? Hey, hey, hey. Might motivate him. Would you draft Michael Penix Jr. in the second round? If he fell into the second round. Tyler, no. Why? He's not going to. I, I don't believe. I, well, I don't have him in my mock draft. Let me reset that. Let me reset the mock draft, and then we'll do our predictions for 2000. And by the way, some of you know, because you've been with me here um, for pretty much all the show. So I'm just going to, hey, I'm going to reset it here. My, my, I do three mock drafts before free agency, after free agency, and one the week of the draft. Like on a Thursday we'll do we'll do um our last installment of our three mock drafts because free agency will dictate and change this so let me reset this this is my first mock draft for 2024 in april i got caleb williams going to chicago jaden daniels going to washington drake may going to the patriots at 3 at four, Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Cardinals. I'm, I'm hacking this guy's name up. I'll have to get a better pronunciation of it tonight. I'll, I'll look it up. Odunzi um, from Washington, the wide receiver at five car, uh, chargers. Somebody Jim Harbaugh would probably want. I got the Giants taking uh, J.J. McCarthy at six. Joe Olt. At seven, Tennessee, OT, Jared Verse, Atlanta, eight, Edge, Florida State. Bears with their second number one, Brian Thomas Jr., LSU wideout, number nine. Fuaga, offensive tackle, Oregon State, Jets. Number 11, Minnesota, Dallas Turner, Edge, Bama. Bo Nix, quarterback, Denver. Oregon, Teron Arnold, cornerback, Bama, Ra Raiders, thir 13. Fashawa, offensive tackle, Penn State, New Orleans, 14. Mitchell, cornerback, Toledo, Indianapolis Colts, 15. Brian Murphy, DT, Texas, Seattle, 16. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver LSU, Jacksonville at 17. J.C. Latham, 18, Cincinnati OT, Bama. Latu, edge rusher, UCLA Rams, 19. Mims, OT, Georgia Steelers, 20. Brock Bowers, tight end, Georgia, Miami at 21. Damn. Brock Bowers, Jalen Waddell, and Tyree Kill. That could be scary. At 22 for the Eagles, I got Chop Robinson. 6'4", 254. Outstanding combine, outstanding season. Ran a 4'4", 8. 35 vertical jump. And as I told you, I talked to Manny Diaz, his D coordinator. Says he's more in line like a Miles Garrett. He thinks he had a better career than what Michael Parsons did at Penn State. He replaces Brandon Graham. Guy's a great looking prospect. I really like this kid. I've been right in the. Would you say, Xander? Last three drafts, I've been pretty right on the picks that I've talked about the Eagles getting. You should have took. Trent McDuffie, when I told you to, you didn't like him. He's a pro bowler. 
and he's an all pro. The kid Floyd down in Jacksonville is a stud. Should have drafted him. Jalen Carter is one of the top three picks in last year's draft. I said Devin Witherspoon was my favorite player in the draft last year. He was rookie of the year. And I think this guy here, and now look, I'm not married to him. Okay? I'm not married to this guy. Because if Bowers falls to 22, I don't know how you just pass on him and just walk by him. I don't know how you just walk by him. Denny goes like this, Bowers and Goddard in the two tight end set. That'd be frightening. Denny run the ball too? So wait a minute. Your two tight end set, Bowers and Goddard and Brown and Smith. And you sign one of these free agent backs. Can you imagine this offense? Here, let's, let's, let's have a fantasy for a minute. You draft Bowers instead of Chop here, Robinson. You got Bowers and Goddard, Devontae Smith, Adams, or um, A.J. Brown. You somehow get Henry in the room, and you got Hurts. How are you not winning the Super Bowl? How are you not winning the Super Bowl? I mean, how are you not winning the Super Bowl? Wiggins, Houston, 23, cornerback, Clemson. Cowboys take Tyler Guyton, OT, Oklahoma. Fentanau, OT, Washington, Green Bay. Buccaneers need a new center. Jackson Powers Johnson, Oregon. Arizona Kool-Aid McKinstry, Bama, Arizona. Arizona could have it. Look who Arizona could take. Arizona could take Kool-Aid McKinstry, Marvin Harrison Jr. in the draft. It's pretty impressive. Buffalo, O'Donnell Mitchell, wide receiver, Texas. DT, Zach Frazier, O-line, West Virginia. Darius Robinson, D-line, Missouri. Niners take Enos Rankinstraw, cornerback, Missouri. And, of course, what's the one thing that you know Kansas City is going to want to look for, a wide receiver? They take the fastest guy in the building, Xavier Worthy, at wide receiver, Tyree Kill, 2.0. I think this has got a really good chance to be a really good draft this year. With Hey, here, here's, who, who, here's the game changers. Um, is there a guy in this draft that's a game changer? I think Harrison Jr. I think this guy Bowers. They're, this is they're good. It's deep with good players. But I don't know there's a Will Anderson. Okay? Now, C.J. Stroud jumped out. Nobody thought he was going to be that. He was, I mean, if you had to read, like, if you were going to go back into the draft and redraft, you would probably go Stroud. The second pick, you would go Who's the kid? Who is the wide receiver from the Rams? What's that kid's name from the Rams? Puka Nagua? The Rams receiver. You go second. You'd probably go Devin Weatherspoon, third, and you would go Carter, four. Weatherspoon was the defensive player of the year. Okay. Yeah, the guy from BYU, yeah. And you'd probably pick that kid who the Rams also took. Look at what the Rams did. The Rams got two guys in later rounds. They got the defensive tackle and they got the wide receiver, and these guys weren't first-rounders, and they're going to be good football players. Hey, man, Rams have a lot of money, and they have a lot of – they have 11 picks coming up here. Rams are going to be good. 
That's not going to be a shitty team anymore. Would it matter because they didn't develop any of the guys they drafted anyways? And some of the guys didn't fit the defensive scheme either. What, what a, a death row. What are you referencing? If you can help me out on that. The Rams, get the Rams. Rams have a ton of money. They have 11 picks. And they got Sean McVay. And they got a capable quarterback. I mean, and they got better towards the end of the year. I don't know. The Rams are not going to be in a position where they're going to struggle. They got a lot of good things going on in Los Angeles right now. They got a lot of good things. That's a good-looking football team. Okay, Rams are in a good direction. They're they're aiming up. 11 draft picks. They have the Rams. Okay, I we did the we did the Eagles. Bold predictions. I predicted that the Eagles would take a quarterback in the third or fourth round. The Eagles are bringing back Gardner Johnson. Jalen Carter will have double-digit sacks. Milton Williams will beat out Jordan Davis by the end of the year. Hertz will throw for over 30 touchdowns. Devontae Smith will have more receiving yards than A.J. Brown this year. Sirianni gets fired in Week 14. Cam Jurgens will be a pro bowler at the end of the year. Nolan Smith will be a flop. N'Kobe Dean will end the season on IR again. Goddard will have 1K in receiving yards. Vic Fangio's pass defense will be in the top 15. And Bill Belichick will be named the head football coach at the end of the year. Those are my 2024 bold predictions. Here's the NFL ones now. I can't wait for free agency next week. I actually love the draft. I do. That would mean failure season of Sirianni's canned. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, a failure season could be 10 and 7 and you get bounced in the playoffs. Couldn't it? Yale, right? If you go 10 and 7 and get bounced in the opening round of the wild card playoffs, isn't that a failure season? Big Seals, why do the Eagles listen in on your negativity against takes against them, but they never listen in your positive takes, especially for the draft? Because nobody likes to be told any advice. And you can't take criticism, which means you're insecure as a human being. That's why. And that's why the librarian is who he is. The librarian's an insecure man. That's why. The great people on the planet listen to people around them because they trust them. And you put people around you that you believe and trust in that will... What what is what does Coach Johnson say all the time? There's a reason that Jimmy Johnson had the same coaching staff with him at Miami and in Dallas and in Miami Dolphins, because those are all people he trusted. Those are all people he knew were going to be great coaches. Those are all people that were going to get the best out of the players that he brought into the organization. But he let people do their jobs. There's a lot of people that want to take all the credit for everything. And you can't do anything by yourself. You just can't. Okay. Oh. Okay. We have a... I'm going to write this down here. We have something for you guys because you guys have been good. You guys have been some, and we appreciate you guys. So we're going to do something for all you. And 
I'll do it now. I was going to tease it a bit, but I'll, I'll do it now. This is something for you guys. Barb goes, I like surprises. I'll see you later, Barb. <laughs> uh, Barb, don't mind me. I'm a, I'm a stonad. Hey, Barb, I'm a stonad. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a stuna. Don't mind me, man. Hey, by the way, you know what my wife says all the time? How he's coming on the show. No, no, no. This is for you. This is for you. This is not for anybody coming on the show. Hey, everybody comes on the show anyway. Okay. We are going to. Okay, it's bottom of the hour. This is good. We are going to have a super chat segment starting next week. Sills responds to all haters and trolls and fans. Okay? This will be next week. We'll give you more particulars on what day we're looking to put this. Now, Xander, am I responding to them or are they coming on also? How are we going to do that? We're gonna, are we going to pick one to come on? Or are we going to have it so that everyone can have a super chat segment next week? I think we should, I think it's going to be a super chat segment, the best super chat segment. And at the end, we may have to put that person on. So we'll give you more details. A super chat segment, because listen, you guys spend a lot of money by sending us all that. And I want to get more out of it, which means you guys should be rewarded for that. Not just me reading something. Okay. So this is only going to, this is only going to pertain to the super chat people. Super chat answering all super chats. Sales picks one winner to join the show. We'll discuss. Okay. So. That's what we're going to do somewhere in the middle of the week next week. Okay. Senor, better sharpen up, man, because you're going to be in the room with a pro. Me. Don't let me eat you up. Okay. Yeah, but you know, you I mean you guys send all those super chats and all that. And you know, I I I me and Xander both think we got to get more out of that where you know you guys deserve more because you some of you, like LJ and all that, you guys come here each and every single day. So yo, sales, we need a Cilio versus Colorado round two. Who's Colorado? I never heard of him. Um Sills versus the world. <laughs> anyway. I, I heard, hey, somebody told me, man. Big Bill! I like it. I actually liked it. Bill Spandaroo. Uh, Bill, hey, that guy could spin that, man. He, he'd make, hey, hey, Bill could make, um, Bill could make Nick Sirianni look like George Hallis. This guy's the greatest thing since George Hallis. Best one in percentage since uh, uh, John Madden. This guy, only him and Madden and Hallis. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. But what doesn't fit? Hallis, Madden, and Sirianni. What doesn't fit? <laughs> and every time you bring this up, it goes like this. Look, Tomlin... And John Harbaugh and Sirianni. I don't know. What does it fit? <laughs> yeah. Which guy are you putting third? Right? Paul Dumowitz? He He's not allowed. Yeah, Paul Dumowitz. That's the guy that tells you how to think. How to pray. And who to vote for. It's always great that a pro football Hall of Fame voter tells you who to pray for, who to vote for. Get out of here, man. 
I get paid on Wednesday. So let's <laughs> let's see. Yeah. You and me are right there, Dirty D. <laughs> well, it just depends on how how um you know generous Xander is. <laughs> Sills versus Skip Bayless. Oh God, that show's not. It's not listenable right now. Okay, it's not listenable. Hump day, I like that hump day. I think Wednesday is going to be a good day. Sound like Ice Cube. Dan taking over Philly media because Philly media won't ask questions. No, you guys give victory parades. Hey. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, and, and by the way, this is a note for the Novacare Center. If the Krauses don't get back with you within three hours of your – Shitty text. Relax, guy. People have jobs and lives. You're not a priority. I am. Relax. We'll get to you and your concerns. All right. Big sales was Michael Urban. That would never happen. Hey, Dolly Parton. Bring her on. I like big things, dude. How you doing? <laughs> okay. Eric Allen and Seth Joyner would be in the Hall of Fame if it wasn't for Dumowitz. Absolutely. Do your job, guy. Don't worry about Dan Cilio and me sticking up for Trent Cole and his ability to make his own choice. Do a better Hall of Fame speech. You put the shittiest Hall of Fame speeches together for Eric Allen. Seth Joyner has no shot. Why don't you do your job? Not worry about me. How many games will the Hurricanes win this season with the new quarterback? I like Cam. Oh, death row. Why would you do that to me? I want to get to my NFL bold predictions, but you put me on the spot. Okay. I would pay $1,000 to have Howie versus Big Sills fitness. That's <laughs> hey, hey. A hey, fitness, you could put a thousand dollars, you could put a hundred thousand dollars. He ain't doing that. Okay. I wouldn't, <laughs> how he wouldn't make it out of here alive. Yeah. And you know what? I wouldn't treat him like a dick. You know, I, I, I I'm not going to say that because that, like, they, like the Krauses say, it doesn't help me. I, I just like to tell you why Sirianni, he doesn't come on. I'm not, I have the text still, but I'm not going to say it. Because it doesn't help me. And like some of my my tweets, Xander goes, how's that helping you? So I'm going to leave it alone. Sirianni was supposed to come on a couple of years ago, but somebody 86 did. <laughs> yeah. Sills and Slay. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they stopped. Uh, Britton Covey doesn't even return my text messages any longer. And he gave me his cell phone. Okay. Sills, it would be great with you and Foles discussing the Philly play. Oh, God, I love that play. T, it's my favorite Super Bowl moment. Don't worry, I have pictures of Howie and Lori in Mexico. <laughs> 30 D, I'd pay big money to watch Sills argue with a kicker and watch him break that when he tells them they aren't real. <laughs> hey, the kicker. Kickers aren't athletes. Sills and Suriani would be a guaranteed gobble ghoul food fight. Philly 500, LJ, who's that? <laughs> what did they write about me and where people are DMing me, asking me about what? I love Philly 500. By the way, it was one of the great things that Xander did. He, he, he introduced me to him. Was it you? We had somebody else on, but he turned out to be a stiff. Um, but Philly 500, man, I love. There was some other dude on. I forgot his name. See, if you're not on a lot, I forget your name quick. Because you're probably not relevant anyway. Um, would you bring Kelsey? Of course I would, man. Are you kidding me? Right? <laughs> uh all right, let's get to the uh, – I appreciate you having me on. So, dude, you're awesome, Philly. 
Uh, hey, hey, Philly 500, just so you know, I get in. We had, we've had this week, we've had Angela Juan, Phil Sims, Carton, Mike Golick. I can't, I think there's someone else. Oh, yeah, Jared Bell and you. And you. Warren Moon. Warren Moon and you. And I'm proud to have you in that group. I'm proud to have you. That's right, Flexing. Hey, you can't forget um, our good friend, uh, Warren Moon. Absolutely. Sells chocolate chip cannolis or a 12 pack of Coronas. A 12-pack of Coronas or chocolate chip cannolis. I'm addicted to cannolis. I love a good cannoli. Can't find you can't get them out west. They suck. Well, there's a place in Arizona we found where my daughter goes to school. Okay. I, I I love seafood, Italian food, chocolate chip cannolis. What is the AZ one called? Um, oh, Anatolis. Senor, Anatolis. It's in Scottsdale. It's in Scottsdale. Phenomenal octopus. I get a plate of octopus, and we get the um, and they make the best calamad I've ever had, and I mean that. No disrespect to my aunt or my wife, but they make a insane plate of calamad. For all you white folks, that's calamaris. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, Senor Anatolis, I and it's reasonable. It's, you know, play to three if you don't get sauced up and have a ton of drinks. You can get out of there with three people for $130. And they're, it's like a $500 plate. They're like five. It would be a $500 dish anywhere else. Okay. Okay. Sills, who should be the new GM for the Eagles? John Dorsey. Who should be the salary cap guy? Howie Roseman. They should split their job up. John Dorsey is the personnel guy. Howie Roseman's the money guy. And I'd have no problem with that. Howie is great at that. Howie's great at structuring contracts. Howie's great at manipulating the salary cap. This is where he comes from. He's a salary cap guy. I'm, I don't want to fire him, but I don't want him running my personnel department. And and when Angelo says he's built some good teams, he's also built some shit ones. It's nothing stable. Jeff Kerr says that. They don't build sustainable teams on defense. Okay? All right. Sills, John Dorsey helped, also helped draft Aaron Rodgers. Kyle, he was up in Green Bay with Ron Wolf and them guys up there with Murphy. I don't remember that. So did he go from Green Bay to um, Kansas City and then from Kansas City to Cleveland? Hey, get this. Do you think he had anything to do with drafting a Hurts? Because he was in Philly before he went to uh, Cleveland. Okay, I mean, he was in Philly, and he kind of left right before the draft. John Dorsey is brilliant at evaluating a talent. Rodgers was a no-brainer. CRTF, that's not true. Alex Smith was drafted ahead of him. How is that a no-brainer at 25? 
Aaron Rodgers was drafted at 25. And Alex Smith was taken number one overall by the 49ers. So when you say it was a no-brainer, that's not true. He was taken in the back end of the draft, and he slid the entire afternoon. That's not true. Okay? It's totally not true. Veach stole Dorsey's credit. Veach had nothing to do with the drafting of Patrick Mahomes. It was all John Dorsey. John Dorsey was the guy. You can Google, you can actually Google it or you can go on X and you can see the soundbite where you see Chris Carter, Shannon Sharp, a bunch of these so-called experts going, there's not a chance in hell Patrick Mahomes is going to win before Deshaun Watson or any of the other quarterbacks that are in the draft. It was Deshaun Watson and somebody else that was in the draft that they were suggesting that they take instead of Mahomes. And John Dorsey goes, no, um, I think this guy's the guy. Shit, Shannon Sharp was calling him undisciplined. Okay. Yeah, RTF goes, but projected to be drafted first by experts. Yeah, but he wasn't. He was drafted 25th. And Alex Smith went number one. That's so what actually happened is the truth and reality. Here's my 2024 NFL bold predictions. Here we go. Number one, the Cincinnati Bengals will lead the National Football League in total offense. And win the Super Bowl. Van Geinkel, Barkley, and Gardner Johnson would be sick. Number two, the Tennessee Titans will win three games. Number three, LJ's going to love this one. Josh Allen will win his first. NFL most valuable player. Number four, the Chargers will make the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. Number five, the Lions will make it back to the NFC championship game. Number six, Carolina's Bryce Young will have a bounce back season for the Carolina Panthers. Number seven, the Cowboys make Dak Prescott the highest paid player in pro football at $60 million and extend them. Bold prediction number eight, Big Sills 2024 NFL. The 49ers will sign Kirk Cousins. Number nine, Jim Harbaugh will become the NFL Coach of the Year. You already know this one. Number 10, the Giants will draft J.J. McCarthy. Number 11, Russell Wilson lands in Washington. Number 12, 
Justin Fields lands in Pittsburgh. And number 13, the Minnesota Vikings will trade Justin Jefferson the day of the draft. So recap. Bengals win the Super Bowl, lead the NFL in total offense. Titans win three games. Josh Allen's your MVP. Chargers make the divisional round of the playoffs. Lions make it back to the NFC title game. Bryce Young has a bounce back year in Carolina. Cowboys make Dak Prescott the highest paid player in the league. 49ers sign Kirk Cousins. Jim Harbaugh is your NFL coach of the year. Giants draft J.J. McCarthy. Russell Wilson lands in Washington. Justin Fields lands in Pittsburgh. And on draft day, the Minnesota Vikings. They trade Justin Jefferson day of the draft. That's right, Kyle. You couldn't be more right than that one there. By the way, real quick. So why did Josh Harris sign Zach Ertz? Is that to piss you guys off more? By the way, um, I mean, is this guy just a dick? Why would you sign Zach Ertz and bring him to Washington when you know he's one of the fan favorites and he was one of the major guys that Eagle fans look to from the 17 Super Bowl? Is he trying to get Zach Ertz fans now? With like, you know, heartstrings between Eagles and see the Eagles don't Eagle fans don't work like that. Once you leave the group, you know, you're you're kind of an outcast. Right? You're you're kind of exiled. So you're kind of like, yeah, they'll love you, but I mean at the end of the day, and then he was part of that team, but it's kind of a jackass thing to do, isn't it? That that sounds like an owner hire. It sounds like an owner hire, doesn't it? Josh Allen going, or uh, Josh Harris going, hey, you know, hey, let's see if we can get Brandon Graham or Fletcher Cox, too, to play in Washington. I'd be like this. Dude, if you sign another Phil- – hey, 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 guys, wait a minute. Fitness, you sign another Philadelphia Eagle, Josh Harris, if you think you're going to get that arena built downtown and you think I'm going to pay season tickets, for you and your uh, one-and-done 76ers, you're out of your mind. Dude, there's a chance he alienates every single Sixer fan by the way he operates the Washington Commanders. Doesn't he see that? You see, Eagle fans and Philly sports fans, I'm learning this. You like your Sixers, but you're not loyal to them like you are the Eagles. And if you keep fucking around with that, and you do something stupid and you alienate, you'll alienate 76er fans. Am I wrong? That guy does stupid stuff to piss off Eagle fans. He's he's got a he's got a that's not the same fan base. In Los Angeles, you can get away with that because they're stupid. I don't care. I don't have loyalty like that. You you do that in Philly, don't they'll never go to Sixer games until you sell the team. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.
Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Yeah, Bill Colangelo's mad at me now. Because me and Angelo are being too uh, negative. I'll I, I tell you, man. If you listen to Bill Colangelo... He'll tell you Nick Sirianni's the best coach since Herb Brooks. <laughs> I mean, he'll have you believe in Sirianni and Herb Brooks, the guy who had the 1980 uh, men's U.S. hockey team. This guy's head right there, man, with, with, you know, with Herb. Herb Brooks and Nick Sirianni. Right there, baby. Hey, he's got a great win percentage. <laughs> yeah. He didn't really lose the team. Oh, of course not. Then why didn't they play hard for him? Because everyone's in love with Pinocchio Sirianni. <laughs> I agree with you, Cosmo. Sirianni. Um, and, and, hey, and Bill Colangelo, he, he can like him all he wants. And I like what you said, Cosmo. He's ass. <laughs> not, not Colangelo, the other guy. Sirianni. Whatever, dude. He'll be fired by week 14. You don't have to worry about it. Right? You have to worry about it. What a week, man. What an absolute week. We got people, get this. Chris Sims's ass wants to come on tomorrow. Should I put him on? And the, but see, you guys will destroy him if I put him on. You guys will put him on, man. If they look at flexing, like a true Philadelphia guy. Hey, Sills, good show. Sills, good show. I don't know, man. Do I really want to take bring it? Like it's <laughs> hey, I, hey, Xander. Um, uh, wait, let's see. Let's see. Judas wants to come on. No, no, Judas, because that could fill a lot of roles with a lot of people in jail. <laughs> Xander and I know when it comes to Judas's. All right. Hey, great stuff. Thank you guys so much. Another fabulous day. We so appreciate it. Please, please hit the like button. Krauses, thank you very much. Two to six tomorrow, and we'll see you on the flip side.